Man, I'm so gorgeous. Uh, let's see if I can fit you in. Dude, I was just looking. Can you see him? Let's see. Uh, you had him. Well, let's see. Hold on. Let's see something here. Okay, that's good. I was just, I was admiring myself, guys. I was like, man, I'm so gorgeous. Welcome, everybody. Invite more folks. Ask the Lord Jesus to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord Jesus to bless this session. Ask the Lord Jesus to illuminate our minds with wisdom, knowledge, understanding from the Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord Jesus by his Holy Spirit to bless Osama and myself. To anoint our mouths, our words, to speak accurately, clearly, without error, without stammering, without confusion. To present the facts perfectly for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that in everything we say and do, not just on our shows, but in our lives, the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, the Father's heart, who became flesh, the eternal companion of the Holy Spirit, will be magnified, glorified in the way we speak, the way we live, the way we serve, the way we do evangelism. It's all about you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Son of God. We depend on you. Wash us in your holy blood, the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. Make us whole. Heal us by your stripes, by your wounds. And feed us, Lord Jesus, and our loved ones, my daughters, <clears throat> feasting off the flesh and the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. And grant us perfect wholeness spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. And Lord Jesus, by your breath of life, by your Holy Spirit, give us the health we need the vigor, the strength, the boldness we need to glorify the, the name of our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to glorify the Lord Jesus, you, Son of God, and anoint us, save us from error and stammering and confusion, and guide us and give us perfect focus. Sabbat, you, Son of God, may we decrease, you increase, please, Son of God, rebuke Satan, rebuke his attacks on our minds, on our session, and bless your servants fill them with the holy spirit to understand and bring muslims to your feet using us to glorify you we worship you O risen lord glory father's heart become flesh eternal companion of the holy spirit we need you son of god we love you father son of the holy spirit in jesus name we pray amen yeah amen. Oh, amen. guys we're going to do a session here where he's going to talk a little bit about abraham and then we're going to open up to q a now this is the best we can do this is the internet connection so if it buffers Bear with us, endure. We're trusting the Lord Jesus to bless the internet connection so Satan won't try to hinder it. This is the best we can do because we're living in an area where it's pretty much from the ninth century. Technology here, they're still discovering what a light bulb is. They're still discovering, you know, what cars are. You know, when they see planes flying, they're thinking it's maybe these huge birds from the time of the dinosaurs. So this is the best we can do. This is the connection. We trust the Lord Jesus in his mercy that he'll keep the connection strong enough that we can do a session. He's going to talk about Abraham and the Quran, then we're going to open up the Q&A. But I have another session scheduled immediately after this where I'll be responding to that Aryan cultist heretic, Greg Stafford, because he took a clip from a debate in which I was present and asked him a question. So now, brother... Greet your, the people and tell them what you want to hear. Hello, everybody. It's good to be with you in this uh, next whatever time we have, an hour or two. We will pray that uh, the Lord, as Brother Sam already prayed, will make it a profitable for us, for me to learn from what I'm teaching you, and for all of us to have a great time. It is uh, Abraham, as uh, we have shared with you before, that Muslims claim that the Quran is a revelation from Allah. God. Why? Because it talk about all the biblical names which we know uh, from the Holy Bible. But when we examine that claim by studying, not just memorizing and reciting, shaking the head back and forth and forth and back and all this as Muslim imams do, uh, we're doing a great job to uh, clear their voice with echoing using the modern technologies, the uh, microphones and the echoing system to make the Quran so uh, oh, holy and so uh, special, and it touched your heart. As I met with a, a Muslim American, who uh, a white guy who became a Muslim, and he told me that one of the reasons why he became a Muslim, he said, when you hear the Quran, brother Sam, it 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 heal your body. Just the hearing of the word of Allah the Quran. He said, do you know that in England now, in the mental hospitals, they're using the Quran as a way to bring healing, to bring calmness on the sick people who are you know uh, have some psychological or mental issues so and I, I cannot literally like with him but I know he does not speak in Arabic 
So I said to him, well, let me, let me quote you something. So said, I said to him, إني أكرهك بشدة إني أرغبك قتلا إني أريد زبحك وشرب دماؤك And he said, you see, you see how beautiful it is? You see how great it is? His wife sat next to him. She is from the country of Syria. She speaks Arabic. She knows Arabic. She almost like somebody pee on herself or maybe poop on herself because she knows what I just said. And he have no clue what I just said. And he's praising what I have said because it was beautiful. So what it did will you say? calm your spirit. So I said to him, well, let me translate to you what I just said in the Arabic language. I hate you so much. I want you dead. I will behead you and drink your blood. And he thought that was beautiful, brother Sam. It touched his heart. By the way, did you make up those lines or is that from Quran? I mean, no, no, no. I made them up. Okay, that's pretty good. You yes. sound like you sounded like Quran. I know, but Allah did, said in the Quran, no one can. Did Jibreel, <laughs> alayhi salam, come down and give you wahi? Because you sound exactly like the Quran. I'm like, man, he's oh, reciting I, I, ayat from Quran. Yes. El Quran, El Kareem. Kareem. I, I think this was just because I'm so smart. That's right. I didn't need the help of Jibreel. Anyway, so, so here is the story. When you hear the story of Abraham and the Quran and the beautiful poetry of the Quran, which is a miracle, not only Abraham speak in a poet system using the rhymes and the end of the words, what do you call the rhymes, the rabbit? Uh, rhythm, rhyme. Rhythm, rhyme. Yeah. Yeah. And the right. funny thing, even the infidels, when they talk with him, and his father, when he talk with him, use the same rhymes, same poetry. It's like, it's like the rehearsal, it man. I said end was un 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 un, and the father ended with un un un, and the infidels in his days, his the people of his family, un un un. They all doing poetry. So it's not just Allah can make poetry. Abraham can do the poetry. His father can do the poetry, and and, and the infidels, those whom you know, they, everybody doing the same poetry. So it's not actually a miracle. I mean, the beauty of the Quran, if it can be said by Allah and and Abraham and the infidels, it's the same. Anyway. I don't know if you get. By the way, I'm, no, you I'm, no, yeah, I'm getting your point, but one thing I'm noticing. Sorry, guys, this is the best we have internet. We can't do any better. We trust the Lord Jesus Christ. At least our sound will come in clearly, even though it's a little foggy. The picture, hopefully, it'll improve. Pray for that. But I noticed something that for some reason, my lines stick out on my forehead, <laughs> the wrinkles. But you, you don't have any. Why is that? Because uh, the beauty. It's just I'm I'm a, I'm a handsome guy. Yeah. See, someone <laughs> liked the poem I wrote. I had written a poem. Yeah. You want me to read it before we? Begin? Sure, I'd okay. love to hear you. Poem. Okay, guys, I I had said this about ten years ago. I had written a poem, <laughs> and I had read it live, and some people melted. Even men started melting, and they told me, <laughs> "Sam, cry? please, no, no." They were like, "Sam, please, don't recite that poem again." Because remember, yeah, homosexuality is a sin. Oh yeah, we we stand for biblical <clears throat> values, and all joking aside, the only type of intimate relationship God honors. And that God has created is <clears throat> between a male and a female, someone born male, someone born female coming together in holy matrim matrimony and a covenant before the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only marriage and relationship God honors. So keep that in mind. And we're not ashamed. We won't compromise. We won't back down. We will affirm what the Bible affirms. We will proclaim what the Bible proclaims without fear, without shame, without compromise by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus Christ, even if it lands us in jail. Now, with that said, when I recited this poem, I actually wrote it. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. Ten years ago, yeah. the, the, the men started melting. They go, you're being a stumbling block, Sam. Oh. I said, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Here, let me read it for you. I said, I will try never to make my brethren stumble again. Now, I don't want you to pass out. Are you guys ready? Okay, now. You can, if you want a copy of this, email me. It'll be free of charge, but I do charge shipping and handling. I'll give it to you free of charge, but it's going to cost $20 for shipping and handling. You can change the words and identify the woman, whatever ethnicity, because this was written for Syrian women in mind. So are you guys ready? <laughs> Tell me I'm not a prophet and a poet. <clears throat> you ready? Yes. Not long ago. The Lord planted a rose from Ashur, a beautiful Assyrian, one that was radiant, majestic, and brilliant. This rose grew from the dirt in the midst of much pain and hurt. Yet despite man's efforts to trample her down, the Lord placed on her a royal crown. Amen. <laughs> Exalting her above her peers, he granted her a vibrant smile to remove one's fears and turn, turn back a person's tears. Mm. Her throne is made of gold of the finest kind. 
a queen whose appearance dazzles the mind. Mm. Her face is fashion more glorious than the sun, and her walk is art which cannot be outdone. Mm. Her teeth are whiter than milk, her skin smoother than silk. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I lost my place because this guy's like. I'm sorry, man. You're I'm like, shaking. You're, you're, I'm not shaking either. Her teeth, her teeth are whiter than milk. Her skin is smoother than silk. Is there any that can compete with the beauty of her heart? None that I know of, because she stands far apart. Mm. Her wisdom is such that none can surpass, having an elegance which none can outclass. Though I know that it is unfair, I pray that someday this rose will care. And be united with me, a peasant who desires to marry her majesty. Even though my rose has gone and turned away, my tearful prayer shall never cease night or day mm. until the Lord is pleased to bring her my way. In my heart, I desire to wake with her at my side, looking at her face and rejoicing that the Lord has made her my bride. Amen. Woo! Until that day comes, my prayer shall always be, O oh Lord Jesus. Please bring back your rose to me. Come on, man. Sam, this is awesome. Did you wrote that? Yes, I did. Are you sure? Yeah, I did. Okay, that's awesome. Anyway, that is that is the most beautiful poetry I have ever heard. When you compare it to the Quran, now the Quran became a garbage can. So you mean mine uh, did the Quran? Even above the one I made up. Anyway, so <clears throat> without uh, further ado. Look at this sister. She melted. Nina, oh, control sorry. yourself, Nina. She goes, Basma gan ukhuni. Sam, so done upon Raba. She goes, Good job for you, Sam, my brother. This was a very nice. See, she started melting. Nina, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to tempt you, sister. Forgive me. <laughs> I love you, Sam. I love you, uh, too. you love you too. <laughs> you love yourself too. That's awesome. You're so humble. You know that? Yeah, man. Oh, humbleness oozes out of my pores. I know. Anyway, life is good. Well, here's the deal. Here's the deal, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to go back to our study without further ado, when we do a quick uh, study to the Quran. We're not going, by the way, word by word, verse by verse. We're just going over through because if we would do Abraham right, we need to have it for a good a year study. Yeah. Literally, because we're not only going to compare the Quran to the Quran, but we're going to compare the Quran to the Bible. And that's a long study. would take forever, especially if Sam would keep interrupting me with his poetry yeah. and his stories and how handsome he looks like and how strong his muscles are. I mean, like, show the muscles. Woo, here we go. Once again, here we go. Once again, see, that's a problem. That's a problem. Can, can we get the study now? Uh, yeah, okay. right. even though I haven't. <clears throat> haven't uh... So uh, today we, we stopped actually last time on, uh, uh, we're talking about Arab Surah the Quran in Quran chapter 15. So uh, chapter and 15. And just to let them know, when he's done with his presentation, we're going to up the Q&A. So get your questions ready. Get ready. And this is the best we can do with the connections. If it's blurry, bear with it as long as the sound comes in clearly. Amen. All right, go ahead. All right, Quran chapter 15, beginning from verse 51. I want to read to you what Allah said about Abraham and the visit of his uh, visitors. So you don't now, want to start at chapter 11. You want to go to 15. Yeah, 15, and then we're going to go back to 11 okay. afterwards, if you don't mind. <clears throat> now, I have Ibn Musaddis. I have Yusuf Ali, and I have Hilali Khan. I'm going to use Yusuf Ali. doesn't matter. Tell them <clears throat> about the guests of Abraham. Guests. How many guests? It says guests. Okay. Uh, you, uh, you, it, the Arabic is, is a it, it, is, it is one dive, dive, singular guest. Yeah, you have oh. Ibrahim. Oh, the guest of Abraham. Yeah, one singular guy. So they mistranslated the Arabic. Uh, sure. Oh, so they deceived us. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, next verse. Okay. When they. Oh, now person. it's plural. Oh. Was it a guy or a bunch of them? Mm. It's a huge difference. Do you, brother Sam? Let me. We we'll talk about Arabic here. The word daif is a singular. The word diouf is plural. Wow. Daifan is two. So you got two guys come and visit you. In Arabic, we have a singular. We have musanna, which is two, dual. And then we have plural, which is three or more. You can be a million or three or more. Okay. So daif is a singular guy. Daifan is two. Diouf is plural. Allah in the Quran did not say, inform them about the Guess the you of Ibrahim, the Daif singular Ibrahim. Okay. But then in verse two, they entered, they entered, they said. Yes. That means there's three or more. Not Kala, Kalu. Kala is two. Kal, one. Kala, two. Kalu, three or more. We have a problem, but that's okay. No big deal. You know, you can use this in future debates. Daif is singular, right? Yeah. 
So you can show how this supports the Trinity, plurality and unity. So if you have so a problem, look. no, what I'm saying, if you have a problem with God being one, but a plurality of persons, then that means you must destroy the Quran. Because here you have more than one angel, but they're classified as one group together as a collective singular. Sure. Wow, that's a good idea. Thank All you. right. So now go ahead. Verse 52. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Okay. When they entered his presence and said, peace, he said, we feel afraid of you. Whoa. whoa, whoa. The people come into Abraham and say, peace. And he said, what? We feel afraid of you. Why are you afraid for somebody to say peace? Let's go. Abraham is not here a child or a, a young guy. He's a grown-up man. We're going to find out later. He is really old. No, he's not. a. Now, when the angel met with Mary in the Quran, forget about the Bible. Yeah. Okay. She got afraid. In the Bible, she did not afraid. Especially when he when she heard the, the greeting of the angel, peace. Yeah. A young lady did not get afraid. And a grown-up man is afraid for people coming in the middle of the day saying peace. Yeah. Okay. Now, remember here. The wording here, they said peace. He said what? Go back to you. We feel afraid of you. Now, do me a favor. Let's go to Quran chapter 11. Okay. And verse 69. 69. And, and read to me how the, we're talking about the same story, yeah, Sam. Same this story. is not two different times. Uh, it was early days and then late days or no. Same story repeats in the Quran. What do we have there? 1169, there came our apostles to Ibrahim with glad tidings. They said, peace. He answered, peace. Wait a minute. Why does the conversation change between Abraham and whoever those guests or friends that come visit him from Quran chapter 11 to Quran chapter 15? Why it's different? Because Allah sometimes forgets. Allah forgets. Okay, read the rest of the verse. Read the rest okay. Of the verse. okay, peace. He answered, peace, and hastened to entertain them with a the roasted calf. He didn't even ask. He Russian. Get gets a cow, kills a cow, fix a cow, and put in front of them. Now let's go to another chapter, which is Quran chapter. <clears throat> Quran chapter 51. 21 or 51. 51 verse 69. Okay, 51, 69. No, I'm, no, 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 no. So never mind, never mind. 51 verse 25. 25. Okay, no. Let's start with 24, if you don't mind. 24. Right. Has this Story reached thee of the honored guests of Abraham. Now they're honored. Yes, That's they okay. Are. Maybe they're honored, but Allah forgot to mention the previous time. So what happened? Behold, they entered his presence and said, peace. He said, peace, and thought these seem unusual people. No, 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 no. Unknown be. He said, peace, peace, unknown people. Now notice, notice how the translation. Now catch, he's going to give you the again. Yusuf Ali says, Abraham said peace, and in parentheses, and thought these seem, that means that's not in the Arabic, unusual people. Halali Khan, guys. Halali Khan. He answered, Salam, and said, you are a people unknown to me. Unknown to me. So who translated more correctly? Uh, Halali Khan. The son of a gun is always, uh, he likes to no. fix it. So, <laughs> now, why when we read the same story in the Quran, written by one angel, Jibreel, given to Muhammad, written in heaven on the guarded board before the creation of the world, and we always have a difference. I love it how Muslims love to attack Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yeah. And they say, well, here Matthew said this, here Mark said this, here John said this, here Luke says they're different. That means there's corruption in the Bible. That means there's contradiction in the Bible. Four different people using their own vocabulary to teach us about what is the good news Sorry. of Jesus. And obviously, to be honest with you, if I read, if I read, and this is a reality, if we go to a court of law and you get four witnesses of an accident, yeah. And the four witness give you what happened next and word for word exactly. As a smart judge, I will throw them out of my courtroom. You know why? Because somebody wrote the scenario, they study it, and they say it. Yeah. It is yeah. not it, It's not reality. In reality, if you're going to bring four people to tell you about an accident happened, there must be different in their wordings. There must be different in the saying, even though all of them are saying the same story. This car hit that car. This car went in the red light and so on, whatever the story. So the four differences about some of the biblical accounts in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John is a great evidence that it is true and accurate. But when you go to the Quran, one prophet, one angel, one Allah, one story, and it's always written different. See? Every time Sam Muhammad repeat any story in the Quran, he forget. What did not help Muhammad is this, that the Quran was never put in a written form. So he made a story in Mecca, in the early days of Mecca, 
And he repeated five years later while he's still in Mecca. And he repeated one more time, 10 years later, as he about to go to Medina. And then he repeated again five years later. Of course, Muhammad could not remember. How in the world do you remember all the details of every story? That's why we obviously have difference. So let's go back to our original reading. Which, but which chapter, sir? Which is 51? Quran chapter 15. Okay, let's go back. And we just read the first two verses. And now we move on to the We're 53, right? Yes, sir. 53. 15, verse 53. Okay, it's chapter 15, 53. They said, fear not. We give thee glad tidings of a son endowed with wisdom. You want to compare this to all the two passages? It's up to you. Well, of course. I mean, it's, if, if you, it makes sense if we understand how the Quran is written here. After he said, you are unknown people. I don't know who you are. And in this story here, in, in Quran chapter 15, we don't read anything about the food. Where is the food? You see any he rush and gets a cow and cook it and fix it? and No. But if you go with me to 11. 70. 11 yes, sir. Now, we're going to compare the parallel story. Chapter 11, verse 70. But when he saw their hands went not towards the meal, he felt some mistrust of them and conceived the fear of them. They said, fear not. We have been sent against the people of Lut. So what causes the fear in Quran chapter 11, book of Hud? What causes the fear? Hud, okay. Hud. What causes why, why Abraham became afraid of them? Because after he fixed the food and put in front of them, they did not use their hand to get in to eat. They did not grab the meat and start chewing. It, okay, that was is the real reason why he was afraid of them. That's not what we read in the following passage, which is what we read in Quran chapter sure. 15. Well, if you open the door, you think the connection will be better? If you want to open the door? Yes, let's try it. Yeah, hold on, guys, because I think uh, somehow we if you open the door, the connection will be much better. Noise from the, uh... It's okay. We'd rather connection than that. Sorry, right. they're washing clothes. Okay, so now we're gonna go chapter 15, you said, and yeah, and uh, um we're going to read verse 50. 52 we just read. Yeah, so 50, uh, 53, right? Well, no, yeah, chapter 15 and verse 52. We're talking about the fear, the fear of Abraham. Yeah. So compare about it. And we, we are at 52, 50, verse of fear not. We give you glad tines, tidings of the sun and doubt with us. So we read that. But you want to go now to the other one, 51? Yes, which is the last one, 51 and verse. Okay, and then this is the one we're going to start. We already read verse 25. Here's 26. These are the three parallel accounts of Abraham's encounter with the angels. So now here's chapter 51. We're going to read 26 and 27. Sure. Then he turned quickly to his household, brought out a fatted calf, and placed it before them. He said, will you not eat? The following verse. When they did not eat, he conceived the fear of them. They said, fear not. And they gave him glad tidings of a son endowed with knowledge. How in the world the, the conversation is always changed whenever Muhammad repeats the same story in the Quran? Not just the order, but the reason of the fear and, and so on. He's testing you. That's right. He's testing me. All right. So let's go back to our original story. I'm not going to be doing that back and forth, back and forth until we get to the 15, Quran chapter 15 uh, and verse 53. Okay. After he was afraid. So what happened in 53? 15, which verse? 53. All right, 53. Let's go. All right. 53. They said, we read 53. Fear not. We give thee glad tidings of a son endowed with wisdom. What is that to Ajil? What do you mean? You're missing something. Read the other guys. Okay, you mean so Yusuf Ali is that bad? No, no, he's bad. He's he's, not he sucks. Him. You guys hear? Yusuf Ali butchers the Quran. So now we're going to read. Let to Ajil. What is let to Ajil? Do okay. not rush. Do not. Uh, oh, okay. because now if I read Hilal Ikhad, they never say that. They, the angel said, do not be afraid. We give you glad tidings of a boy, son possessing much knowledge and wisdom. Neither one of them translated it? Well, the word wajilun is the word fear. La to wajil. They don't. Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll let this pass. It's, it's not a so big deal. It's, no, it's it's a little bit off, but that's okay. But notice now, fifty verse fifty four. What happened? He said, "Do you give me glad tidings that old age has seized me? Excuse of what me. then is your good news? Oh, good, 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 good. The conversation here is between Abraham and the people and and this guest. And Abraham made the statement like." It's kind of too late. I'm an old man, and you give me that good news. That sentence does not exist in, in the other passages, as we're going to look one more time. So he was afraid because he did not eat, or he's afraid without, without any reason, or there's no mention of his fear. And then they give him the good news that you can have a, 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 a smart young boy, okay? He said, what? You, you're giving me that good news when I'm an old man? What? What is the purpose of the good news? Now, 
by the way, when you compare all this, brother Sam, to what is written in Genesis account, none of this is true. All of it is not true. But let's go for, look, go to chapter 11 and let's see uh, what happened immediately after uh, they were afraid. He was afraid right. because they uh, did not eat. In verse 70, chapter 11, verse 70. By the way, my special friend Tatiana said, hi, I can't stay, but I just want to support you and pray for you. Thank you so much. Appreciate my you, special sister. friend Tatiana. Thank you so much. Okay. No, no, okay, what's the verse? Okay, uh, We're in verse 70. One more time. We're going to go slow. 70, down. guys, this is showing. 11. Now, let me explain why you're doing this so they can understand. Why you need to study these arguments. Why you need to be able to then share it. The attack by Muslims on the Gospels is this. Pay attention to what he's doing here. They'll say, well, Matthew, Mark, and Luke will repeat the same story, but not the same way. And then they use, that, they use that to then discredit the Gospels, that they're not historically reliable, which is nonsense. But now what you're doing is saying, if that's the case, we're now going to use your own argument, turn it against you, because the Quran repeats the same story several times with contradictory conflicting details it doesn't even get the story <clears throat> right it's constantly changing the wording of the conversations now why is that more damaging to the quran I just want you to understand this because the quran is not the word of a man or men according to the muslims it is the eternal uncreated speech of allah that means allah is repeating the same story same conversation but he can't get the details exactly the same it's worse than that Allah told us what Abraham would say before he created Adam and Eve. When we say the Quran is written and it's kept on the guarded board in the seven heavens, as Muslims claim, that means what Allah said Abraham will say immediately, perfectly, word for word, what Abraham would say. But if Allah gave me three different conversations about the same one story, which one of them did Abraham say? Exactly. Which so one? Understand why this is more damaging. We expect four different human authors inspired by the Holy Spirit to report the same event from different angles and perspectives because that's what the Holy Spirit wants. If the Holy Spirit didn't want to give us four different perspectives, he'd inspire one human author. But the Quran is supposedly the speech of Allah, one omniscient being, and he can't repeat the same story in the exact same way. This destroys the Quran. Okay, now, what was the verse? 1170. All right. But when he saw their hands went not towards the meal, he felt some mistrust of them. And conceived a fear of them. They said, fear not. We have been sent against the people of Hut. Well, here in Quran chapter 11, the reason of the fear is because he, they did not eat. And immediately when they told them, don't be afraid. Hey, we're going to the people of Hut. From their own purpose, on their own, just made up that statement. We're not going here to hurt you or harm you or anything. But we're going to that Lut. We do not know, of course, from the Quran who is Lut. Yeah, yeah. What is the relationship between Lut and Abraham? Have no clue. There's no way a Muslim scholar or a Muslim genuine people can come and say, oh, look, it's Abraham's nephew. No, you cannot find this in one of the Quran. So this is the answer of the visitors after Abraham was afraid. We went in, we already covered uh, Quran 15 verse 52. And they said, don't be afraid. Where is Lot in that story here? Nothing. No lie. He was, he was, he was, he said he was afraid. He says, that, don't be afraid. We'll give you a good news of a boy. He said, you give me a good news of having a boy. What, I'm an old man? It's, it's a symbol. No mention here at all about a uh, 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 lot or anything. The connection, no, no connection between a uh, fear of Abraham and Lot. No. So when he, they immediately respond, they didn't mention Lot. They only mentioned him way later in the conversation. Okay. okay. Now, let's go to chapter 50. 51, you mean? One. Yeah. Once again, the story here matched the first one. Which verse? Verse 28. All right, let's go. When they did not eat, he conceived the fear of them. They said, fear not. And they gave him glad tidings of a son endowed with knowledge. No mention of Lot. Yeah. No mention. We're not here to harm you. or We're here to we're only go to the people of Lot. Now, let's continue to the reaction. The reaction uh, uh, of Abraham. Of course, we said Abraham is the one who said in Quran uh, uh, 15 that I'm an old man. But none of that statement was never written in chapter 11. Nor in chapter uh, 51, the reaction of Abraham to the good news about having a son, it was only re recorded in 50, in uh, 15, not in 11 or chapter 51. Now, now let's move on to the following uh, statement, which is verse 55. 
That's 15, 55, 56. All right. They said, we give thee glad tidings and truth. Be not then in despair. He said, and who despairs of the mercy of his Lord, but such as go astray? Mm -hmm. Abraham said, what then is this on which you have come, O ye apostles of God? Well, did he ask a question? Is he going next? Or they told him themselves because they saw him is afraid. The story is, is completely changed. Now, they said in verse 58. All right. Now, here's 58, guys. They said, we have been sent a people to a people deep in sin, accepting the adherence of loot. That's 59. Them we are certainly charged to save from harm. All except his wife, who we have ascertained will be among those who lag behind. Now, let me get you a more correct translation. Yusuf Ali deceived you. I'm now reading their response, 58 to 60. Notice what they say to Ibrahim. We're going to a people deep in sin, to the people of Lot. And then they say in his version, notice how he deceived you guys. And he's going to show you the Arabic. Except his wife, who we have ascertained, we have determined, we have seen, we've realized she'll be among those who will lag behind. Now, he softened the text because now I'm going to read Hilari Khan, 60. Except his wife, whom we have decreed that she shall be of those who remain behind, I shall be destroyed. Now, you know the Arabic. Isn't this proof that it says Allah decreed to, to destroy? Nothing happened in human's life unless it's already decreed by Allah at the age of 120 days inside the mother womb when the angels go in with a book, uh, with a scroll and a pen to write down exactly the future of that baby to be a boy or a girl to be happy or miserable to spend eternity in hell and heaven how long he's going to live how much he's going to be uh, is he going to be a rich or a poor everything about human's life is decreed by Allah is or ordered by Allah written by Allah at the age of 120 days old when that baby 120 years old is just a piece of meat guys you understand the difference Yusuf Ali in 1160 said we discerned it's not that Allah predestined to destroy her. We discern she's going to be of those who lag behind. Actually, the Arabic doesn't say that. We made it to be. It is, we it's decreed, we predestined. It. Yeah. So here you have proof from the Quran. Allah predestines those whom he'll destroy and damn to hell. There is no free will. But Yusuf Ali being embarrassed softened it. Shame on him. All right. Let's go now to Quran chapter 51. 51, and we're going to go to uh, 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 read the same story again. We're gonna, I know I'm, I've been reading myself, but read from 26 to see how the story goes. Okay, I'll read now. The yeah, 26. Then he turned quickly to his household, brought out a fatted calf, and placed it before them. He said, will you not eat? When they did not eat, he conceived the fear of them. Okay, they said, fear not. And they gave him glad tidings of a son endowed with knowledge. But his wife came forward laughing, <laughs> yeah. laughing aloud. She smote her forehead. <laughs> so I got to, you know, do animate, right? No, <laughs> not forehead. So it's forehead, man. She struck her face. Oh, because he said forehead. You said, well, you're yeah. son of a gun. Okay, but Hilal Ali Khan does say, then his wife came forward with a loud voice. She smote her face. Slap <laughs> her face. <laughs> easy, 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 Sam. Stop, stop. You're okay, you're okay. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. All right. All right. Said, a barren old woman. They said, even so has thy Lord spoken, and he's full of wisdom and knowledge. Okay. The conversation is changed from one book to another. As we read, Abraham said, how can this be? I'm an old man. This good news is too late now. Now, here we're here about his wife laugh and slap in her face. Okay. As we read before, if you remember last time in the Quran chapter 11, I want you to read again what is happening in verse 71. 1171. 1171. Huh? Right, yes. 11. Here you go, 1171. And his wife standing there and she laughed. <laughs> but we gave her glad tidings, Isaac, and after him of Jacob. So she's going to be the mother of Isaac and Jacob. Yes, indeed. Two boys, two boys coming up. Now, verse 72, might as well go ahead and read it. She said, alas for me, shall I bear a child, seeing I'm an old woman and my husband here is an old man? That would indeed be a wonderful thing. Well, the story is written. Then the story is different uh, and different wording as we see from here to there. Uh, the conversation, if you would, the beauty of the Quran, ladies and gentlemen, is not for Muslim to memorize it, it's not for Muslim to repeat it in these uh, uh, words, it's for Muslim to put it side by side and read the conversation. 
Huge difference. Right? Abraham said, no, it is actually his wife said, we don't know his wife, of course. Well, no, it could be, uh, Hagar Sarah, could, be, yeah. Sarah could be anybody. Could be anyone. And so on. And the composition, the angels will add words is not written here, but it's written there. And I'm, I'm wondering how in the world Muslim can critique Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they ignore the unbelievable, nonsensical teaching of Muhammad in the Quran concerning any of the stories of the prophet. This All is a them. test from Allah to see if you're going to believe or you're going to question the wisdom of Allah. This is hikmah. hikmah. Allah alam. Allah alam. Yes, Allah alam. Now, let's go back to our uh, study in uh, chapter uh, 15, which we are. Uh, and we actually, uh, uh, if we talk about the people of Lot, the story is mentioned about Lot, Lot, Lot. So if I want to look at the word Lot in the Quran to compare what happened a lot in that chapter, what happened a lot in that chapter, is a completely different story. We should story. do, but, yeah, do uh, the yeah. session on it this week. We, 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 you want to do a separate yeah, time? We're going to do it yeah, this week. We can because we're here for... Okay. Yeah. Uh, because I really want to look at Lot yeah, and Abraham. The together. connection between Lot and Abraham throughout the Quran will be a different story. And then, if, if you want to really enjoy reading this, the Quran and understand the Quran, look at the relationship between Lot and Ishmael. How much do we know about Ishmael and the Quran? Well, good luck to figure out anything about Ishmael. How about... Uh, uh, Jacob himself, how much we know about Jacob in the Quran? We said before, I repeat again, you know nothing about Jacob. The only way you understand the story of Jacob is to read Quran chapter 12, the story of Joseph, which have nothing to do with Jacob. I mean, Jacob only have two lines there. How about uh, uh, Isaac? Isaac, of course, written throughout the Quran. Quran chapter 37 is the only part we can learn about Isaac, which sadly Muslim until today do not know is that 37 in Quran and the Zabih, the story of the sacrifice, son, it is not Ishmael, it's Isaac, even in the Quran. Now, if you talk about the brother of Isaac, his name is what? I'm sorry, the brother of Jacob, his name is what? Esau. Esau does not Where? exist. Not in the Quran. In he the Quran. Brother. His brother, actually, Jacob's brother is uh, Isaac, according to the Quran. So, so, so where is the story of Abraham? What do we know about Abraham in the Quran? We only know that Abraham has one wife. We don't know her name. We know that this wife gave birth to his three sons, Ishmael, Isaac, and Jacob. All right? And we... We only know that Lot somehow was in a city deep in sin, but we don't know where that city is. And we only only know that Lot's wife, who's not mentioned by name, it was decreed to be destroyed. That's what we learned. Was Abraham and Lot in the trouble in the fire which Muhammad mentioned in the Quran? Or yeah. it was just Abraham? So that's a good question. Confusion. Let's read this in Quran chapter 50. Uh, I'm sorry, Quran chapter... You don't have that passage ready. I'm sorry. I'm okay, what do you need? Yeah. If you don't mind, go with me to Quran chapter 21. Yeah. Get all and verse 69 down to see where is uh how far that 69 to what 20 20 verse, whatever. I just put some there. All right. Here you go. Let's go. Okay, so 2169. So you see how confusing the Quran is, it even got him confused. My goodness. 2169. No, 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 let's go earlier than that. How about you, man? How, about how, you? how early? You're, you're mad at me. You're mad at me. No, me. I'll you know what? Here we go. Let's go from it's beginning from verse 51. Quran 2151, and we'll, we'll go right. for it. Okay, let's go. See, poor guy, the Quran. This, this is what happens to your brain on the Quran. You lose your head. That's right. All right, here you go. We bestowed after time on Abraham before time his rectitude of conduct, okay, his guidance. And well were we acquainted with him. Behold, he said to his father and his people, what are these images to which ye are so assiduous images devoted? What, what does other guy say about images? Images, they said no, images. Not wrong, both wrong. Temesil is statues. Statues. Temsel yeah. is, is a statue made out of wood, made out of rock, made out of gold, made out of silver. It's an idol, not images, but the statue itself. But that's okay. So they just want to tell you image, huh? Yeah. All right. Okay, let's go. Image could be a picture. Is it a picture? Can yeah. you make a picture of an image? Yes, of course. But I'm talking about a statue. Okay. okay so that's what it is. Yeah, because at that time they didn't they didn't have like cameras. Okay. Yeah. All right. They said, We found our fathers worshiping them. He said, Indeed, you have been in manifest error, ye and your fathers. Yeah. They said, Have you brought us the truth? Or are you one of those who just make fun? He, said, I mean. mm -hmm. he said, Nay, your Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. He who created them from nothing. And I'm a witness to this truth. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Abraham was a witness to the Lord who created the heaven and earth. Yeah, he was there. He was counseling Allah. Was he sitting next to Jesus when he was creating the world? No, he was having tea with Michael. What's wrong with you? But how can Abraham say he would? Does Muhammad understand what the word witness is? 
uh, obviously not. When, when, when Muslims today say, I, I bear witness, I shadow, does he know what the word witness actually means? Witness, you have to be there, Sam. You have to sit there, see it, touch it, feel it, smell it. I witness that this tea is hot. Why? Because when I hold the cup, it's hot in my hand. I witness this tea is sweet. Why? Because when I taste it, it's sugar in my, sugar in my mouth. And I witness and I witness the smell, everything. The senses which God gives us make us true witness. How in the world Aram say he's a witness of the truth of the creation? Because, because Allahu Alam, brother. Allahu Alam. Because Allah took Abraham into the past and showed them the creation before Abraham, Abraham came to this world. Yes. Okay. Allah Allah Allah. Go ahead. Verse 57. 57. All right. Uh, and by God, Wallahi, Wallah, I have a plan for your idols after you go away and turn your backs. So he broke so them. Go ahead. He's telling them up front. After you leave, I'm going to destroy these guys. I have a plan. I'm going to just, you turn around and go and I'll take care of it. Okay. okay. So he broke them to pieces, all but the biggest of them, that they might turn and address themselves to it. They said, who has done this to our gods? Wait a minute. I, didn't I just told you, after you leave, I'm going to destroy your gods? Yeah. What, what are you worried about? It, I'm telling you up front, Sam, after you leave, I'm going to break your car. I'm going to damage your car. You come back and see the car. Who did it? Really? Yes. It is like a, a small question to ask. Go ahead and He it. must indeed be some man of impiety. They said, we heard a youth talk of them. He is called Abraham. They said, then bring him before the eyes of the people. What is the use? Yeah, I guess here it says youth. It says young man, youth. He's young. I don't think Abraham was young when he left. Was he? No. He was an old man, 75 yeah, the Quran, years old. The Quran, the Quran, the age age is irrelevant. The light mm -hmm. of eternity, he was young. Yeah. They said, then bring him before the eyes of the people that they may bear witness. They said, art well, well, thou? Bear witness. Excuse me. How many people were there when he damaged the idols? Their jinns were there. The jinns was there. Once again, Their I gym. don't think I know. I was I don't I don't think the people themselves here understand the word. They're gonna testify. Well, I just said I'm gonna destroy, it, but I didn't. Somebody else did it. Yeah. How can you bring a witness that ever because I said that mean I did it? Yeah. No, but see, you understand Islam, you guys don't know. This guy's a kafir. In Islam, you have a genie attached to you, right? You have yeah, a jinn. Two, two. So their jinns were there, they saw it, so they came back and said, Hey, we we, we saw him. Yeah. So we will bear witness to exactly, you. Okay, exactly. The genie, come on, man. Okay, here is the first time Abraham lied. Go okay, ahead. read verse. Uh, so he broke them. Okay, let's uh, get this. They said, six. Art thou the one? Are you the one who did this with our gods, O Abraham? He said, Nay, this was done by this is their bigger one. He did it, this big idol that, you know, remember he didn't no destroy one? the idol? <laughs> yeah, he he did it. Ask them if they can speak intelligently. So they turned to themselves and said, Surely you are the ones in the wrong. You get it? Now they're saying, Dude, man, we're stupid. He's right. The idols couldn't defend themselves. And he's saying the big idol destroyed the little one. So ask them, wow, you got us, Abraham. So let me continue. Then 64. So they turned to themselves and said, surely you are the ones in the wrong. Then were they confounded with shame. They said, thou knowest full well that these idols do not speak. Sure. Abraham said, do you then worship besides Allah things that can neither be of any good to you nor do you harm? Besides. Mean yeah. doing it. Yes, besides Allah. No, besides. without, without, not besides, without. So they, have, they both have besides on them. Wow. Like, you know, Mindun, mean doing, when you say beside, is one thing, without is another thing. Mean doing, I mean, it's okay to worship them if you put God with him. That the, the statement here, mean doing, it's you're like, if you want to worship this guy, it's fine. And as long as Allah, but if you're going to worship them without Allah, then you have a problem. That's a big difference in the writing, in the translation, but that's okay. Keep going. Okay, so let's let's continue. All right, so then it says... <clears throat> 66. Abraham said, do you then worship besides Allah things that can neither be of any good to you nor do you harm? Fie upon you. Oof, oof. Fie upon you. Okay. And upon the things that you worship besides Allah. Have you no sense? They said, burn him and protect your gods if you do anything at all. Mm -hmm. We said, oh, fire. Be thou cool and a means of safety for Ibrahim. Then they sought a stratagem to harm him, but we made them the ones that lost most. Okay, let's talk about that if you don't mind. Yeah. When you look at Ibn Kassir interpretation to this fire steal here, I love it because he had too much stuff and make you laugh. It's comedy. First of all, when Allah said, Oh, fire, be cold and peace, he said, You know why Allah said and peace? Because if Allah said to the fire to be cold, 
and uh, he uh, did not he did not say the word peace abraham would have died from the coldness of the fire it would be so cold like a freeze and he will be but when allah said that's okay it's okay don't slap me so allah said peace because it's very important if not then it will be so cold and he will die from the fire but now when you read the extra material i don't know where in the world ibn kasir brings this about when abraham was thrown to the fire that it was not just a fire you go out and gather some wood and build it that fire take actually years to gather the wood I'm listening, but they want you to come a little closer I'm, to the camera. I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm they don't. They don't like to see me. They think you're better looking. That's okay. I, I'm. I'm. An, uh, well, here, here I am. I can see myself. All right. Yeah. So, so you think about it is this way, that all the women of the city who would love to have a baby boy, they have girls. Or they want to have a baby boy, so they make a promise to Allah. They make an oath to Allah. To Allah. I mean, when you notice, we notice when Muslims talk about the infidels swearing to Allah. Speaking to Allah, make a promise to Allah. It doesn't make any sense. You, you talk about which Allah? The Allah of Muhammad, the Allah of Abraham, or the Allah of their gods? And it's okay. So they make an oath, and in the oath they said, if you give me a baby boy, I will carry wood to the fire of Abraham. And behold, they got pregnant, and they got a baby, and the baby was a boy. Which means what, Sam? It means that this fire at least took nine months to gather the wood for it. It's not just a day and night. So Abraham was in the fire for nine months? No, no, no. Yeah. Preparation for the fire. Nine the wood, months to prepare a fire? It could be even more. could be more. Now, so, now, Abraham was thrown to the fire. And the in the interpretation of Ibn Kassir and others, they will tell you that the people who threw them to the fire were burned because the fire was so hot. They're talking about long, long months and months of gathering the wood. But Abraham, close, did not eat even smell like fire his hair did not smell like as a fire America. does this look like a story in the bible somewhere else what, yeah what, that's what? in daniel chapter 3 the story of shadrach meshach abednego same same idea isn't yeah, it yeah they were thrown in the fire and the people that heated the fire died but, from the heat but but muhammad and his companion would love to add some more all the creatures all the creatures in this earth at the time of yes. abraham were trying everything they can to help abraham to get rid of the fire so what they do they carry water Imagine a bird will put a, a whole uh, a spoon of water in his mouth. If a big bird will carry a whole cup of water and go on the top of the fire and drop the water because they want to help Abraham yep. to stop the fire because they don't want Abraham to be hurt by the fire. Good, yes. good. Now, uh, there is one creature on yep. the other hand. Guys, as he's talking, I have an article on it. There's the link. Click on the article. There was one creature who what? I wrote who an article. Does not, does not want the fire to stop. They actually do everything they can to make the fire hotter and hotter. The way you make a fire work, if you create a fire, you get some wood and ashes and you start a fire, is you blow air on it. You blow air. The way you blow air on it, or you <laughs> blow air on it with your mouth, a piece of paper or a piece of wood or a piece of... One way, when you get air through the fire, the fire gets hotter and hotter. And that's exactly what the lizard used to do in Abraham days at the time of the fire. They blew air on the fire to make it hot. That's why Muhammad, the one who wanted revenge from the ancestries of this lizard, hundreds of years yep. later, he actually and all his Muslim companion, they killed every lizard they can catch. Can and I read that beats for them? Sure, read okay, it. Okay, guys, I just gave you the link. I posted it three times. I'm now going to read Ibn Kathir's commentary and the Hadith. Muhammad ordered that Muslims kill the lizard, the gecko. So you know this Geico commercial? Oh, man. Geico, guys, it has to be banned. If you're a Muslim, if you fear Allah and you love his messenger, you have to get Ge Geico banned. You have to get it shut down. You have to make sure that by the grace of God, <clears throat> that you will never, yes, the fake, fake God, you will never, never, allow geico to air another commercial with the gecko because according to muhammad sajad's satanic bastard whore prophet who's burning in hell because of muta according to muhammad the lizard blew the fire to make blew on the fire to make it hotter to make sure that abraham suffered and mm -hmm. allah's punishment is to now kill all of the lizard's descendants let me read it for you okay, here you go so you guys don't think i'm lying this is from Sunan Nasai. Sunan Nasai, right? Okay. <clears throat> Volume 3, Book 24, Hadith 2834. It's in the article. I just gave you the link three times. 
It was narrated from Sayyid bin al Musayyib that a woman entered upon Aisha, and in her hand was an iron footed stick. She said, What is this? She, Aisha, said, It is for these geckos, because the Prophet of Allah told us that there was nothing that did not try to extinguish the fire for Ibrahim except for this animal. So he told us to kill it. And he forbid us to kill harmless snakes except for the snake with the two lines on its back and the snake with a short tail for the snatch away the eyesight. They snatch your eyesight away and cause that which is in woman's wombs to be miscarried. So somehow this snake will cause a woman to miscarry. Wow, what a powerful snake. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. Here's another one. This comes from <clears throat> Riyadh al-Salihin. Riyadh al-Salihin. And it's quoting from Bukhari and Muslim. Okay. <clears throat> Book 19. Hadith 1863. Okay, book 19, Hadith 1863. The book of miscellaneous, miscellaneous hadith of significant values. Um Sharik said, The Messenger Allah ordered me to kill the chameleon. He also said, It blew fire on Prophet Ibrahim. A stuck for Allah gets stuck for Allah. <laughs> okay, now let me read Ibn Kathir. We'll finish it. Here is Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir. Well, let me read Sayyid Bukhari as well. Sal Bukhari, because I want to get authentic traditions. Oh, that's Daif, brother. Daif Jiddan. Daif, yeah. Okay. Sal Bukhari, volume four, book 55, number 579. It's all in the article. Yeah. So you and I give you the links. Again, there is Um Shark. Allah's apostle ordered that the salamander should be killed and said, It, the salamander, blew the fire in Ibrahim. Ibn Kathir. Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Let's read it. It's mm -hmm. kind of lengthy. Yeah. Let's read it. How Ibrahim was thrown into the fire and how Allah controlled it. Okay. Ibrahim. Okay. And Allah controlled it. When their arguments were refuted and their incapability became clear, when truth was made manifest and falsehood was defeated, they resorted to using their power and strength and said, Burn him and help your gods if you'll be doing. So they gathered together a huge amount of wood. As Suddi said, if a woman is sick, she would make a vow that if she recovered, she would bring a wood to burn Ibrahim. Amen. Then they made a hole in the ground and set it aflame and burned with huge sparks and immense flames. There had never been a fire like it. They put Ibrahim. It was too hot. They, they put Ibrahim, peace be upon him, into yeah. a catapult. <whistles> catapult. At the suggestion of nomadic Kurdish men from Persia. There were Kurds back then? <laughs> I don't think so. But it says... A it's nomadic okay, Kurdish okay. man. Muhammad is they were. He saw the words there. Okay, so Kurdish. Okay. Shuayb al Jabai said his name was ha Hazen. Mm -hmm. Hazen, and Allah caused the earth to swallow him up, and he will, will remain sinking into it until the day of resurrection. Mm -hmm. Allahu Akbar. Amen. When they threw him, he said, Sufficient for me is Allah, and he is the best disposer of affairs. So they catapulted him. And he was to be the same. He was to be the same. And he went right into it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is similar to what Al-Bukhari recorded from Ibn Abbas that Ibrahim said, sufficient for me is Allah and he is the best disposer of affairs when he was thrown into the fire and Muhammad said it when they said, verily the people have gathered against you, therefore fear them, but increase them in faith and they said, Allah is sufficient for us and he's the best disposer of affairs 3173, Allahu Akbar Sayyid bin Jubayr reported that Ibn Abbas said, when Abraham was thrown into the fire, the keeper the angel of the rain said when will I be commanded send rain? But the command of Allah was more swift. Allah said, O oh fire, be you cool in safety for Ibrahim. There was no fire left on earth that was not extinguished. Ibn Abbas and Abu al-Aliya said, were not for the fact that Allah said, and safety, Ibrahim would have been harmed by its coldness. Oh, it be so you're not lying, would, bro. It would, it would freeze inside the body. So everything said. And you know what's so, so funny, Sam? When you read Ibn Kassir writing, he's not only mentioned this one. You just picked up one of the stories. Yeah. He will give you four or five different stories, and each one of them is different. You sure about that? Uh, absolutely. And then in the end, he will say, Wallahu alam. Allah So scholar disagree, scholar differ, scholar whatever, and they give you a bunch of different stories. They're all similar, but they're different. Like we read an Abraham story, different wording, same thing like that. So instead, like you said, here the women were sick. See, other one women want to have a baby, boys, or other one women will have uh, uh, they're they not married, they, like they get married, or whatever. They make a vow to Allah and they ask Allah if they will do this, He will carry, they will carry wood. Okay. The part now, let's finish the part, the most important part. Yeah, okay, okay, let's finish the most important part. Okay, on that day, well, let me read the entire narration. Hold on. Uh, so who's narrating it? This is Ibn Kir, safety, yeah. Ibn mm -hmm. Kathir Katada said, 
On that day, there was no creature that did not try to extinguish, extinguish the fire for Ibrahim. No creature that did not try to extinguish the fire for Ibrahim, except for the gecko. Man, they hate that. As Zuhri said, yeah. the prophet commanded that it should be killed and called it a harmful vermin. Now, guys, here's what's ironic. Just make this point. Okay, here's what's ironic. What's ironic is that here you had a gecko long ago, a long ago, that blew fire in Abraham. 2,200 years, 2,300 years. What was the punishment? Here's the punishment. Now every other gecko and lizard must now be killed for the sin of that one gecko. So Muslims want to tell me, Muslims want to tell me, I got you. it is not fair that we suffer because of the sin of Adam. But and it's not fair that Jesus dies for our sins, but it's completely fair to Allah and his messenger to now kill, murder every gecko and lizard because of the sin of one gecko who lived long ago, who's no longer around. His sin now condemned all other lizards and gecko to but be murdered by, by Muslims. But, but how do you know it's just one gecko? There may be 10 of them. Well, it's a gecko. That's all I'm saying. Okay, you get the point? <laughs> so notice, it's fair... To kill and murder insects, vermins, animals for the sin of one insect, vermin, or animal. Now, they all suffer, but it's not fair that you suffer because of Adam's sin or Jesus suffers for your sins. No, and if you talk about Jesus, really what Muslim cannot see it. They say it without seeing it, that Jesus could not die for our sin. But at the same time, Allah made another Jesus who is a cologne of Jesus look exactly like Jesus. And that Jesus can die. Or it's okay for him to die for Jesus. So that's fair. So Jesus is not a savior, but Jesus is a saved man by another Jesus who have no sin, who yeah. commit nothing. He didn't do this. That's fair, right? To the Muslim. But they, they don't see it that way, Sam. No. They don't think of it. No. They just repeat a broken record. They just repeat what they've been told all their life without meditating or, or thinking about what they're saying. Yeah. Anyway. Now, but, but hold on. I have to now get finished. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Listen, you Muslims. If you love Allah and his messenger, there was a Muslim sheikh who said you have to boycott Mickey Mouse. Okay, sure. now, yeah. you Muslims, if you truly fear Allah and love his messenger, you must boycott Ge Geico, Geico Insurance. You must now protest and get them off the air, and you must get them to stop having commercials with the Gecko because they're insulting Ibrahim by now making a Gecko famous, and they're offending Allah and his messenger. You must now... Stand up for Allah and his messenger. Mm -hmm. You need to now start a petition. Geico must go. Sure. Geico must go. Geico must go. No more gecko. And Geico, and, and no more see, gecko. See, that's the work of the infidels. They try to make the Mickey Mouse and they try to make it uh, Tom and Jerry a comedy to brainwash our, our children, the Muslim children, and make them like mice which is not right and now they make you have you ever seen geico commercial they're very friendly very funny you sit and they may you fall in love with geico you fall in love with that leather which muhammad did and all the muslims so you have to choose in reality to love allah and muhammad and respect your ancestors who killed the geico or just leave islam and buy geico insurance and fall in love with geico make the, uh, your children love them too you know? it, yeah, one of the two one more thing about the fire before i forget one more thing Abraham's mama. Oh, yeah. Abraham mama. Abraham family. mama, she uh, did exactly the same role of the king in the book of Daniel. She actually went to the fire to check on her son to, be, to see if he's still alive. Abraham oh, mama. Abraham! Abraham, sweetheart, boy, my son. He's, yes, mama. Oh, you're still alive. Oh, praise Allah. I'm glad you're still alive. Can you ask on your Allah? Can you ask from your God? To give me permission to come and visit with you? Sure, mama, just a minute. He talked to his genie. What do you thought? The, the, the genie. Yeah, yeah, the, the hey, hey, genie, can the you please check with Allah? Exactly. Uh, my mama is outside. I mean, I mean, man, I've not seen my mama. But she, it was more dramatic at first. It was like uh, Abraham's wife. When she first saw that Abraham's on fire, she went, slap her face. <laughs> he's, 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 it's okay, man. It's okay. I love you, I love you. Oh, my so, son, Ibrahim. My son. That's how, that's how in the Middle East we do. When somebody, well, that actually hurt, man. I just hurt myself. I'm ahead. sorry. When, whenever somebody dies, the slap on the face is a very normal action. It's a show of sorrow. You, the men carry dirt on their face, on their head, cut their clothes. It's a, you read about this in the Bible, too. It's, it's a normal. But yeah, anyway, very, so very normal. now now Abraham talked talk to the genie. Genie talked to Allah. Allah said to genie, yep, go ahead, tell him that's okay. She can come in. So his mama coming into the fire. 
and she visited with him. Uh, I'm assuming they have a cup of hot tea yeah. or maybe hot coffee, she something. They drink the hospitality. It's part of our culture. And then she left. Now we ask the Muslim people, what in the world did we learn about Abraham's fire? What happened after he was in the fire? I mean, yes, it was not hot. Yes, it was cool. Yes, he had some time there. Yes, his mama visited with him in the fire. And his mama left the fire. And so obviously Abraham somehow got out of the fire. What happened next? Yeah, what happened? I'm asking you. Allah on him. So what is the what is the purpose of picking up a biblical account about Chatrach Mishach Abnahu from the book of Daniel and in and, and, and twist it and make it to fit with Abraham? When we go to Daniel and we read the biblical account, we know that the king literally make an order, make a command that these Jewish people, their God is a true God, because that God saved their life even from this burning fire and he gave an order for for uh, would you mind go to the book of Daniel see the reaction of that story that true biblical account and 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 i want to see why muhammad just pick and bits and pieces from biblical account and give it to abraham and then you never give us the end what do we gain out of out of the story from muhammad concerning abraham when we compare that what happened in the real life of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego? What was the reaction of the king there? And what was the reaction of the people of Abraham yeah. here? Anything different? Go ahead. So it's you want the entire chapter? If you don't mind. It's very important. It's verse 20, 20 verses. Let's read Daniel, Daniel 3. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width 6 cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent together sent to gather together the officials, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image, which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the officials, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set, set up. And a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the peoples, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans or Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, Sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, dulcimer, and all kinds of music should fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, <clears throat> that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, but psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, to fall down and worship the image which I have made, very well. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to, to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But even if he does not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your God nor worship the golden image which you have set up. That's beautiful, guys. You see? Amen. Notice either way, he can save us, but if he doesn't, we will still not worship. We will die and be burned alive 
for the glory of our God, who doesn't need us and we need him. And Amen. now let's continue. But the, the point of the story is this. The king believed in the God of Shalach Mishab now. That's coming. The, okay, go ahead. Let's read. You know, go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. Therefore he spoke and commanded that they should hear, heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. He commanded the most mighty men in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their trousers, their coats, their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spoke and said to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, true, O king. He answered and said, but I see four men. So a fourth man appeared, one who assumed human shape, human form, appears as a man. Loose and walking in the midst of the fire, and they are unharmed. Now watch who showed up, guys. Let this encourage you. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, the eternal son who's always been there from the beginning and will be with us to the very end. He's the almighty son who saves. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Mm -hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar, then Nebuchadnezzar <clears throat> came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of most high God, Amen. come out and come here. Mm -hmm. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the midst of the fire. The officials, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed, nor had the smell of fire even come upon them. That's how almighty Jesus is, our Lord. Then Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was sent his angel. Now notice the son of God is the messenger of God, the angel of God proving Jesus is that divine angel of God who's not a creature sent by God to appear visibly to save God's people and to condemn God's enemies. Here it is, the angel of God, the son of God, Jesus Christ our Lord, and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They have defied the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God who can deliver in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. So now we see, Brother Sam, the end of the physical, uh, the uh, true account of the Bible concerning Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king believed in God. And he gives his decree to protect the chosen God, uh, God, the children of Israel. Now, in the case of Abraham, what happened? Well, he just did, came did, out, right? Did he stay in the fire? Yeah. Well, I, I cannot even see him coming out of the fire. Show me the verse in the Quran. We're, we're reading the, 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 the story here. Show me the verse where Abraham came out of the fire. Or show me what is the reaction of the people in Abraham's days when he came. How many people believed in Abraham and his after he came out of the fire. Okay, he came out of the fire. Obviously, he came out. Okay, logic. You don't have to tell me about that. How many people believed in Abraham after this took place? That's the say, huh? Allah, Allah. There's, no, there's nobody. Where did Abraham went to after he came out of the fire? That's good. Anywhere. Okay, Where so now go? let's go back to our story here. We stopped at verse 69. Ya nar kuni berden wa salam and al Ibrahim. Yeah. Okay, that's verse 69. We'll keep going if you don't mind with me to the following verse. Uh, 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 70 until we get to the end of the story. All right. Then they sought a stratagem against them, but we made them the ones that lost most. So you mean when Allah said, let the fire be cool, they still devised something? Sure. Else? Nobody in the believe. They actually still the same. Okay. They're still the same. Keep going. Okay, now. But we delivered him and his nephew Lut and whoa, directed whoa, whoa. him to the land which we have blessed for the nation. His nephew? Where do you get the word his nephew from? Uh, uh, Ibn Musaddis, the liar, the deceiver Yusuf Ali put his nephew in parentheses. Oh, in parentheses. And we rescued him and, and Lot. That's what the was Lot with Abraham in the fire. Allahu Wait, read the context, my friend. 
Why Allah? Why, why you why you deliver Lot if Lot was not in the problem? If Lot was living in a separate house, maybe a good three block away. Okay, how can you deliver, rescue, or save him? Or or Najah is saved. We saved him and his Lot. Yeah, rescue and him Lot and Lot from, Lot, from right? the fire. The land which we have blessed for the Alameen, Alameen, mankind and jinns. What is this land? Nobody knows. Okay, verse seventy-two. Okay. And we bestowed upon him Isaac. Now, notice again, guys, why you really have to get the translation by <clears throat> Osama Dr. the Genesis Quran. And we'll put the links to his website where you can get it as an ebook if you're out of America or you can get it as a book because the Muslims are so dishonest. Now, here's what's ironic they accuse Christians and Jews of corrupting the Holy Bible, changing it, and then misinterpreting it. Yet they are masters of perverting, corrupting the texts of the Quran. That's why they have multiple Arabic versions, not one. And they are masters of butchering, twisting the Arabic Quran, deceiving you, adding or say, taking away words to lie and deceive you. And these people claim they fear Allah and love his messenger. Yeah. Why am I Amen. saying that? Amen. Amen. Because notice how Yusuf Ali mistranslates. He puts words in parentheses to confuse you, as do Hilali Khan. If I didn't know Arabic and I read their translation, this is what I would get. And we bestowed on him, supposedly Abraham, Isaac, an additional gift. And they put in parentheses a grandson, Jacob. And we made righteous men of every one of them. Now watch <laughs> Hilali Khan. Hilali Khan. And we bestowed on him Ishaq. And they too put in parentheses. And a grandson, Yaqub. Each one we made righteous. The literal translation, this is the second verse that suggests that Isaac and Jacob are brothers, sons of Abraham. Why? Because literally it says... And we bestowed on Abraham. We gave Abraham Isaac and Jacob. Each one we made righteous. We bestowed on him Isaac and Jacob. That's little Arabic, 2172. And in chapter 11, it says they gave good tidings to Abraham's wife of Isaac and Jacob. So if you read these verses, you don't know the Bible. Isaac and Jacob are brothers, sons of Abraham and his wife. I don't think Muhammad really knows the difference. I don't think Muhammad knows the details of the story. He knows the names. He heard the story in one of his caravan traveling. Jacob, Isaac. I mean, he maybe actually would think that Jacob maybe is the oldest son and Isaac is the youngest son. Who knows? And when he had Ishmael, third, as I said before, that makes them three sons. Yes, they're brothers. Three yeah. sons, three brothers. Okay, now 73, well, a little bit more to. Uh, all right. And I'll give you an article I wrote on this. I wrote an article on Is Ishmael Isaac's and Jacob's brother? Or is Isaac and Jacob brothers? Or what's going on? I wrote an article on the confusion. Lord willing, I'll give it to you before we end it. And I'll put it in the description box as well. Okay, so we gave him Isaac. And we made them leaders, guiding by our command. And we sent them wahi, inspiration, to do good deeds, to establish regular prayers, and to practice regular charity. Is it zakat or? Uh, zakat. Zakat, okay. Mm -hmm. Salah. 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 Sometimes he used sadaqa. And give them zakat, and they constantly served us. All right. And to Lut, to Lot, too, we gave judgment and knowledge, and we saved them from the town which practiced abominations. Truly, they were a people given to evil, a rebellious people. And we, and we admitted him to our mercy, for he's one of the righteous. So, what happened to Lot? What oh. happened to Abraham? What do you mean? I mean, that's all what you know from the Quran. It's it's not a missing uh, portion of the story. It's missing the whole story. Yes. Um, the scripture is very clear in Revelation. No one can add. No one can take away. You know what Muhammad did in every, every story, story? He perverted. He take away so much that you cannot see. So Sam, for our dear Christian or, or listeners, the 200 plus we have right now, these people, these people literally can understand the story of Abraham when they read the Quran because here's the problem. You need to take out of your mind, out of your understanding, everything you know about Abraham from the Bible. Yeah. And you read the Quran for itself. You cannot do this naturally. If I'm telling a story about some something happened, okay, and you know the end of it, you know the details of it, You, you if I tell you bits and pieces of it, you already know it, okay? But if you take out of your mind that the, the, the information you have about Abraham or Lot from the Bible, and you read the Quran by itself, you will be lost. That's how Muslims are... And cannot understand the Quran because they don't have the details, the other information which Allah did not mention in the Quran. You take this information out from your mind, trust me, you'll be a lost in a in a zoo, lost in a in a crowd. You have no clue where you're at, where you're going from. 
the biblical account of Abraham is very clear, is very understood. I'm going to ask Sam if he does not mind to read to us the same story in Genesis account because I'm talking about the visitors. We, we, we started with the visitors, the visitors, we went to Abraham, we went to the forbidden. Let us examine the true biblical account in Genesis 18, I believe. All 33 verses. If you don't mind, and I don't forget that. when we're we, done, they want questions. Uh, does that laws winning will answer any question if I know the answer? Remember, you're, you're just, it's, it's your world. They're all squirrels. They're I know. Not. Okay. Right. But you cannot understand how corrupt the Quran is without knowing what's written in the Quran. So this session here is not actually for our dear Christian uh, believers. Yes. This is for the Muslims who read the Quran, memorize the Quran, and believe in the Quran without examining the Quran. We examine your book and it is founded want okay it is empty it does not have the information now let's prove to you that muhammad got the story from the bible and he took away from it and he add to it and only allah knows yeah. the truth okay here we go so genesis 18 is 33 verses this actually shows that god can appear on earth as a man he, he didn't become man let me just before i read it i want to make sure christians get this this is not god becoming human by nature in the old testament god would often appear invisible form in various shapes he could mm -hmm. appear as fire right he could appear in human shape mm -hmm. in human form as a man but he didn't take on the nature of those things he didn't become <clears throat> those things by nature the only time god became human became man and became a true flesh and blood human being is when he condescended yeah. to take flesh from the holy consecrated flesh of the virgin take a physical body from her bones from her flesh from her blood from her by the holy spirit as a virgin conceived them and gave birth to them as a virgin that's the only time god actually became human and then added to his divine person the son added to his divine person a second nature the nature of humanity one person two natures in the old testament because i have to make sure the christians are getting confused in the old testament god would often appear visibly but in no time in the old testament did he become in nature that very thing that he appears as or in? So if he appeared as fire, he didn't become fire by nature. He just assumed the shape of fire. If he appeared by, as man, he didn't become human by nature. He assumed human form. That is a manifestation. That's different than incarnation. Incarnation means he now becomes flesh. Jesus, the eternal son, is in flesh and he remains in flesh. That's different. So and, keep and, and Muslim, by the way, before you get to this passage, Muslim know that and believe in that because Muhammad have seen Gabriel in two forms. Yes. Sometimes like uh, uh, Dahiya uh, look like a man, or sometimes he saw uh, angel Gabriel with his uh, 144 uh, wings. Okay. Yes. So, uh, so it's, uh, that's not a, a new concept for our. Or even Muslim in the Quran, and, and if you go to Surah Al Maryam, chapter 19, it says Jibreel. we sent our ruh, not Jibril. Don't fall oh, for the oh, trap, oh, sinner. Yeah. yeah. It says, we sent Aruch who appeared as a perfect looking man. And I have the several hadith, yeah. hadith, sound narrations, mm -hmm. where Muhammad said, my Lord appeared to me as a man. And he put his palm on my chest and I felt the coolness of his hand on my chest. And then I was able to understand everything. I have those hadiths. Good, good. There's some. But anyway, yeah. let's read this. Okay. And by the way, go to my YouTube channel. I've done several sessions on God appearing to Abraham. Was it Jesus or the Trinity? I have sessions on this. And in those sessions, I link to my articles because I've written articles on this. So go back and feast on spiritual meat. Learn this stuff for the glory of Christ. Here you go. This is the word Lord means Jehovah. Genesis 18 verses 1 to 33. The Lord, Yahuwah, Yehovah, appeared to Abraham near the great oak trees of Mamre while he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. <clears throat> Abraham lifted up his eyes. And look and saw three men. Notice three again. Not four, not five, but three. Coincidence? Anyway. Saw three men standing across him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself toward the ground. He said, my Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. I will bring a piece of bread so that you may refresh yourselves. After that, you may pass on now that you have come to your servant. So notice they're going to have water to wash their feet and even refresh themselves. And he's going to give them food. So these three will eat human food and have feet that are so tangible that they can be touched and can actually be washed by water. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. 
And they said, so do as you have said. Wait a minute. You mean they will eat? They will have the normal uh, act like a Contrary human? Contrary to the Quran, right? Sure. Absolutely. They're, they didn't eat. Their hand never touched it. That's why he got scared. Yep, yep, exactly. All Let right. me just put this guy in. One second. Oh, no. All right, we're black. We have a Mohammedan running his mouth off. No, we're, okay, because he wants to wants a debate in the comment section because he's scared because he knows what will happen to all of his messengers. So let's see if he shows up. All right, now, with that said, here we go. Let's continue. Okay, so Abraham turned, hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly prepare three measures of fine flour, knead it, and make cakes. Then Abraham ran into the herd and took a choice and tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought butter and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. By the way, if you want to know what the heavenly menu is, what God and angels eat, they eat cakes and they eat calves and butter and milk. Amen. That's the diet of champions. Okay. Amen. And another thing, by the way, you know how you hear in commercials it says, Weedy is the breakfast of champions? Weedies? Yeah. Okay. You know that's a lie and a slander. Do you know what the real breakfast of champions is? Mm -hmm. Honeycomb. If you guys want to eat a heavenly diet, eat the food that even God eats. Here he ate cakes, calf, milk, and butter. If you go to Luke 24, 36 to 43, King James Version, New King James Version, Modern English Version. The majority of manuscripts have this. It says that Jesus ate broiled fish and honeycomb. In other words, the real breakfast of champions is not Wheaties. It's honeycomb. You Christians, stock up on honeycomb, and every morning make sure you have honeycomb for breakfast because that is the true breakfast of true champions. Amen. Honeycomb, not Wheaties, buddy. And make sure you Muslims get Geico shut down because of the gecko. But anyway, let's continue. Yeah. Are you laughing at me? Or uh, no, no, I'm just excited about it. Too All much, right. too no more Wheaties for you, buddy. No, Repent. No, I know. All right. Now, so then Abraham ran into the herd. They got the calf. He then brought butter and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. So here is God and two others. Maybe it's the Trinity or God and two angels. That's debatable. But definitely one of them's God. They're eating human food, guys. Now understand what that means. They didn't become flesh. They didn't become human by nature. They only assumed a human form, a human body that is so real and tangible it can be touched. And in that human form, they can do human functions like eat actual physical food. But they ate. Yeah, and it says they ate. In the Quran, they did. No, we don't eat. Maybe, yeah. They right. said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, there in the tent. One of them said, I will certainly return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son. So one of them is speaking. I will return to you next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old and very advanced in age, and Sarah was well past childbearing. Then Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am so old, and my Lord is also old also, shall I have pleasure now? Notice the crown says she was doing this. She didn't do that in the Bible. Anyway. That's the Quranic version. That, yeah, yeah. Boy, man, that hurts. I yeah. didn't know my hands are so heavy. It hurt yeah, myself. You, you're strong. Sam. But she didn't do that, You're right? strong, yes. Okay. Then Lord Jehovah Yahuwah said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I surely bear a child when I'm old? Is anything too difficult for the Lord, Yahuwah, Jehovah? The point of time, I will return to you. So notice as Jehovah speaking, guys, proof that one of the men is God. God is on earth in human form. Amen. So Jehovah said, I will return at the appointed time, at this time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Then Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh because she was afraid. Sure. But he said, yes, you did laugh. Okay. You know what? I, I don't want you to read Solomon yeah. more. I will keep this for the next session because I didn't want to see all, right. all what Muhammad saw so about Abraham it. and uh, Lot right. and the connection between Abraham and Lot and the Quran when we compare it to the true biblical account because a uh, lot of Muslims mock uh, the, the character of Lot and uh, how he lived his life in the in the Bible while they have no answer for any question about Lot in the Quran. Okay. All right. So, Lord oh, willing, God we're going to do sweet. more on the series of the Quran being jumbled as part of the live Q&A. So, what we'll do in the Q&A, he'll go into a Quranic story showing you how confused jumbled it is. And we'll open up the Q&A by the grace of God. So, there's more to come because I'll be here for another week if the Lord wills. Amen. And if that was it, final points or you're done? I'm done with our stuff. Just answer some questions. Okay, yes. guys.
Now is your turn to ask questions on the topic or any topic, even biblical topics. But I would prefer you Skype me, if the Lord wills, because I prefer Skype calls over text because it will make it easier then for the person to then read the verses for us. But if you don't Skype because you're too scared, because you don't want people to hear your voice, <laughs> then we'll take it in the comment section. And don't forget, check out my YouTube channel. I've already scheduled, scheduled, scheduled another discussion. I'm going to refute Arian cultist Greg Stafford and Arian, who's like a Jehovah Witness, who took a clip from a debate in which I asked him a question because it seems I'm getting to him. Glory to Jesus Christ. I'm rocking his world. I'm shaking his foundation as we destroy his false satanic God for the glory of Jehovah Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I'm going live, Lord willing, in about two hours. Make sure you join us for that session if the Lord wills. Now, I will take Skype calls, preferably. Here's my Skype. If not, then we'll just examine. Uh-huh, Berto, someone's calling me. Is this a Berto? Hold on, Hold on Berto. Wait one second, Berto. Are you the guy that I blocked last time? We'll see. Sometimes they call and they start swearing, so be prepared. Oh, man. Yeah, hold on. Hold on, Berto. Yeah, so get ready, right? I'm ready. All right. Sorry yeah. for my coffee breath. I know That's it's going. okay, man. That's okay. After this, maybe we get some coffee, too. We'll, we'll get some coffee soon here. All right, here we go. That's a blessing. Yo. Hey. What's happening? Hey, how's it going, guys? That's okay. We thought you were going to cuss us out. You're like a mom with a fake name. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I just wanted to talk about uh, the name of Yahweh in the Quran. Oh, okay. Again? Round <laughs> no, two? I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> he wants to kill me, this guy. Go ahead. Oh, man. No. Uh, my question is about um, Surah Al Qasas. Um, 2830, um, the voice of Allah speaking to Moses. Yep, so go to chapter um, 28, verse 30. He's gonna open up his Quran. One second, you have your Quran, okay? Sorry, unless you want to read it for you. Want to read from your version? I don't have my version. Okay, do you have your Quran with you, friend? Yeah, I got it. Okay, read it. Go ahead, read it. A few different Qurans open right now. Okay, read it for us. All right, um, so it starts off. Uh, behold, Moses said to his family, perceive a fire. I'm reading the Kaloon right now. I uh -huh. perceive a fire soon. Will yes, I yes. bring you from there some information? You said you're reading Cologne? The Kaloon. Okay, so guys, he's reading the Cologne version. What about perfume? Do you have the perfume? No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, man. It's fine what you do. Uh, <laughs> well, there's kind of, there's like a few questions that I have about this because in some Qurans it says that there's a mountain and a, a burning bush or tree there. And then in some Qurans, it doesn't. And then I'm reading the Yusuf Ali. So open up 2830 so, in the Arabic. He wants to know. Uh, some yeah. translations have mountain, you said? Yeah, some <laughs> translations have mountain and then actual burning bush. And then some don't. And um, so I, I went on to uh, EF Dawa yesterday. And they told me that mountain is not in the Arabic. It is. And uh, Okay, 2830, read it. Read the Arabic. It first. says here. فلما أتاها نودا من شاطئ الوادي نفسه the the uh, the the uh, the mountain is in verse twenty nine. Why don't you read for us twenty nine and thirty and we'll, I will compare it word for word with Arabic. Okay. Um, yeah. So it says um, because the versification I think is a little bit different or something is up with this. Uh, Website, Whatever you do, says, just read a verse before. Uh, 28 and uh, 29 sure, yeah. and 30. Yeah. Behold, Moses said to his family, I perceive a fire. Soon will I bring you from there some information. Or I will bring you a burning brand to light our fuel that you may warm yourselves. Why did the mountain out of it? Man, no, no, no. We passed it. We passed oh, okay. it. Okay. Well, read the next verse again. Uh, the verse after the one yes, I just read. Yes, the one you just read. Read the yeah. next one. I can go back. Um, so the verse before is, um, two verses before is, as to thee, the Quran is bestowed upon thee from the presence of one who is wise and all-knowing. Yeah. Yeah, Behold, keep reading, Moses keep reading. said to his family, yep. I perceive a fire. Soon I will bring you from there some information, or I will bring you a burning brand to light our fuel that ye may warm yourselves. But when he came to the, to the fire... A voice was heard. Blessed are those in the fire and those around, and glory to Allah. Yeah. 
And here oh, in his translation, oh, Moses, right? barely, I okay. am a lot of Before you go on, in his translation, lines. Berto. Yeah. Before you go on, in his translation, I have 29. So when Moses had fulfilled the term and departed with his family, he saw fire, fire on the mountainside. He said to his family, stay, surely I see a fire. Perhaps I may bring you news from it or a brand from the fire. Perhaps you will be warm. So in his translation, yep. he's going to show the Arabic, says, I see a fire where on the mountainside. And in the following verse, he went to that fire. That means he went to the yeah. mountain. Yeah. So do you have in that translation any reference in verse 29 to mountain or no? No, in the Kuluni it doesn't have it, but in the Duri it does. In the Duri it says Duri, in verse Duri 29. Right. But okay. now when Moses had fulfilled the term and was traveling with his family, he perceived a fire in the direction of Mount Tour. Uh, he said to his family, Terry, he Mount Tour? Tour. Yeah, because he's, what he's doing is he's reading the Qirat, the different translations of the Qirat. Where are you getting the difference of the Qirat? Uh, from Yusuf Ali. Qirat, aren't they? Hold on. Yeah. So where are you getting the English translations of the Qirat, the Qirat, different Arabic versions? From, uh, from Yusuf Ali. It's the, uh, how's, he, how's Yusuf uh, Ali a, giving you the different? It's a website app. Called QuranFlash.com. Yusuf Ali is giving you the different Qirat. Man, he's probably giving it to you from his grave. How did he give it to you? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I'm just referring. I'm referring to this website. Oh, it's a website, uh, and it's giving you the different yeah. readings of the Arabic Qirat. Yes. Okay. So I'm I'm baffled now because you confuse me. They gave you okay, a translation of Qalun, and then they gave you a translation of Duri. Yeah. All right. Can you give me the link? Send it to me. Um, I want to see what you're reading. I'm looking at my, sorry, I'm looking at my laptop and I'm talking to you on my phone. Okay. Why don't you go on your laptop, put the link in the comment uh, section. Oh, you can't do that either because you're not a mod. Okay. I'm a mod. Oh, you are? Then I need to yeah. then block you. All right. Put the link in the comment section. <laughs> put the link okay, in the comment section because you, you you baffled me because I don't know where you're reading from. Uh, I was assuming okay. it's it's the Qiraat, but anyway, maybe I want to see where you're getting this from. Put the link for us. Sure, yeah, I'm just opening it up right now. Let me see, right? because I was assuming it's a different Qiraat, but how would you have access to that if they're not translated? Unless, again, anyway. Where I posted see. it. All right, one second. Well, he's going to give us the link. Where'd you post it? Uh, in the chat. You mean you didn't post in the comment section of the? I put it in the I put it in the live chat. I didn't see it, brother. It didn't show up. There it goes now. Oh, okay, now it finally showed up. All right, finally after five years. All right, hold on. Okay, hold on. Yeah, see, this is the Qirat. So how did you, are you are you reading it in Arabic? No, I'm reading the Yusuf Ali. Okay, but my this is where you confuse me. Yusuf Ali didn't okay. give you the translations of the Qirat, you gave me something that these are all the Qirat, right? These are the uh, different Arabic versions. And I only see the Arabic. Yeah. Ali. Okay, so if you um, look down, you, it'll say translation. And you can click that. Okay. Yeah, but that doesn't mean Yusuf Ali is going to give you the Duri or the Qalun. I think... Al-Hilali. Yeah, this, but I'm thinking Yusuf Ali's Quran would be based on the 1924... Cairo edition, which mm -hmm. is based on Hafs, right? Mm -hmm. It's a Hafs. So this is where you blew my mind away because you said Qalun, and then you said Duri, but then you said Yusuf Ali. So this is why you do this to me. You keep torturing my mind and causing me to get discombobulated. <laughs> so let's try this again. Let's start from the beginning. You're not reading the Qirat. You're reading translation. So don't tell me Qalun or Duri. What translation of the Quran in English you're reading? Uh, it's the Yusuf Ali. Okay. So in the Yusuf Ali, you're saying it does not have mountainside. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, but then if I, in some it does, in some it doesn't. Yes. Um, I'm, like yeah. in, for example, in um, the Kaloon, it doesn't. Right, so you can use this website, and you can select different um, kiraat, and then and they tell you, you Kalun doesn't the... have it. How do you know it says it doesn't have it? Did you read in Arabic or in English? Because I'm still not understanding. 
I'm just reading it in English, and that's what I'm trying okay, to Okay, where does... Like, is oh, mountain oh, 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 in oh, oh, the Arabic? I'm, I'm going to probably... No? Ortho, I'm going to have to block you, brother, because we are... The communication's breaking down. Where did you get that it says Kalun doesn't have it? You keep telling me English, Yusuf Ali. Do you have a note yeah. that says Kalun doesn't have it? Because you don't read the Arabic. No. So why are you telling me Kalun doesn't have it? Because I'm reading the translation, and that's what the translation says. But the says. translation is not based on Kalun. If you're reading Hilali Khan and you're reading Yusuf Ali, they're not translating the different Qirat. They're translating the Habs. Oh, well, it's it's uh, it's different between each um, Qirat. That I'm, yeah, that's okay. That Differences in website. English is different. The difference in the English is not reflective of a different Qirat or Qiraat. Qirat. The difference okay. in the translation is simply the Muslims playing with the same standard Arabic text. Because as far as I know, Hilali Khan translates from the 1924 Cairo edition. So does Abdullah Yusuf Ali. They're based primarily on the Habs. So please don't attribute the difference to the different Qirat. Because this is why it took 10 minutes for me to figure out what you're asking me. You see what's happening here? I'm trying to figure yeah, out. Yeah, what, I got you. Okay. If it's in the Qirat, he can look at the Arabic and show you. But you're going with the English. The Arabic used by Yusuf Ali, the Arabic used by Hilali Khan, is that Habs edition? Is the word mountain there? Yes. Read it for us. Uh, 29. <laughs> Okay, the word is, is there. Mountain, yeah. Okay, so. And then when you go to verse 30, oh, when he came to it, which is a fire, which is in the mountain, which obviously he was. Okay, so the, the, the Arabic of Yusuf Ali and Hilali Khan, because they all go with the Hafs. I'm, I'm reading. And it says in the Arabic, tour, because this guy confused the hell out of me. Qanun doesn't have a duty, doesn't have, how do you know? It's, tour it's tour Sina is uh, a mountain of Sina. The word okay. Tur means Jebel. So what did Kiev Dawa tell you? They told me that the uh, mountain is not in the verse. Wait, wait, and you gave them 28, 29? Oh, yeah. Okay, then they lied to you. They, they said that, and they also said that um, the voice isn't coming from the bush or the tree. Okay. Okay, that's what they told you. But the, my point is, you sure it's documented? And I have to ask this because, brother, we're called to a higher standard as Christians, and I'm not trying to be tough with my Christian brothers. We make, we must make sure we've understood what we hear and read so we don't misrepresent. So far, you're having our time understanding and communicating, communicating your point. And I say this because this is the second time this has happened between you and me. Are you positive if I go to their session and I play your clip, you've understood them correctly? Uh, yeah, when Sura said that mountain is not in the verse. So you okay? That's good. I have to be careful because the enemies of the gospel, the enemies of Jesus Christ, are watching us, and any little mistake we made, they're going to then make a clip and blow it out of proportion to discredit us in the eyes of the Muslims, out of their hatred for us because they see us as a threat. This is why I'm very strict with Christians. You must make sure you've understood what you hear and read and communicated accurately. Don't miscommunicate. So that's so why I kept saying, are you sure you was 28, 29, or 30? Because in 30, yeah, in the verse 30, the word mountain is not there. It's in 29. You said 30. No, it actually, was, actually, it is it. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. You don't understand their mindset. Their mindset is they're looking oh, at that yeah. verse. So the word. They literally it's literally not the word. there. Okay. You get it? Yeah. So if he said 30, it's his fault. He let them get away with murder because he was wrong because he confused you and me. He said 30 when it was 29. Okay, so you're making mistake. Why did you say 30 when it was 29? Um, well, because um, it's kind of like a multi-layered question here because um, the first part is, is mountain and fire actually in um, the verse or in the context okay. it wants of that know, verse? What and then the second where? part is, if Allah cannot <clears throat> enter his creation, then... Why is it that Moses can hear all his voice? Okay. The voice came, uh, obviously, Moses went to the mountain because the fire was on the top of the mountain. That's where he went to it. And the voice he heard from the right side of the blessed tree, which was on the top of the mountain. Okay. So the, so the right voice came the from the right side of the blessed tree. Blessed tree. So it says tree? 
Okay, so there's a fire, there's a mountain, there's a tree. Yeah. And there's a tree on the right side of the mountain. No, the voice came from the right side of the blessed okay, spot. Okay, the blessed tree. Okay, so the blessed spot or tree? He was called or cried, a voice cried out to him from the right side of the Buqa al Mubarakah, from the holy spot or holy and place what's the spot? of the tree. Okay, the tree. So it's saying the tree is on a spot, and the right side of the spot, a voice was heard. Yeah. Okay. And so. they call this area a blessed spot because Allah is in it and make it a blessing. Okay, so Mubarakah. I can now understand what they're saying. Now I understand their argument. This is their argument. The Quran argument. says, well, actually, I understand their mindset. This is what they're saying. Yeah. Here's what they're saying. They're saying the Quran says he heard a voice from the right side of the spot where the tree was. So they're getting away with technicality. The voice didn't say came from the tree. It says the voice was heard from the right side of the spot of the blessed tree. So this is how they're getting away with it. And so, then and, and with all respect, if you want to be that particular, yeah, well, they are, they what, are. what right side? Yeah, the right side of the spot where the tree is. With which which way Moses was looking? Was he looking north, south, east, yeah. west? I can make it four around. Yeah, but what I'm saying Inside. is he wants four. to know is the voice from the tree. That particular verse, yeah. that particular verse doesn't say That's the voice same. came out of the tree. Yeah. So there I give it to them. Okay, so they're right. The verse you read, the verse you read didn't say the voice came from the tree. It says the voice came from the right side of the spot where the tree was so they're getting away with technicality but still the voice is there on the mountain why because where's the spot on the mountain where was the voice heard from the mountain so there you still caught them they caught you because it doesn't say from the tree you caught them because the voice did ring from did sound from the spot on earth what spot the mountain what mountain on earth that they can't get away with but let me give you a better one. Go to chapter 27 of the Quran, verses 7 to 9. Guys, I hope I'm not torturing you by going into this extra depth because, again, our duty as Christians, every one of us, we must be extra sharp, focused, and meticulous in reading extra super careful because the enemies will turn every argument against us, against us even silly mistakes that are intentional, to discredit us and Jesus our Lord is worthy we go to the highest level possible be as strict and meticulous and disciplined as possible not in just the way we understand and communicate but the way we live for the glory of Jesus Christ now this one you can't get away from in chapter 27 verses 7 to 9 in chapter 27 verses 7 to 9 read for me your translation so are you talking to me I was talking to the gin on the wall hey gin Brother, sorry, this, I, before I'm, the rapture. Uh, sorry, I thought you were talking to Osama. <laughs> no, I, if I'm looking at I'll look at him. But I don't look at him because he's not that pretty. <laughs> Read it for me. Uh, 27, is that... What's the name of that chapter? Because it doesn't have the numbers in this app. It just says the name. La sharika lallahu. Hold on. I don't know if it's Surat al-Nahl. It should be Surat al-Nahl. I think so. Let me check. Let me check. You want me to even memorize the surah's names? You're killing me, man. You're killing me, small soul. Killing me softly. Yep. Uh, it's surat and namal. Namal. No, man. I got it confused. It's actually a different insect. It's the ants. Namal. Not nahl. Surat and namal. 27 verses 7 to 9. Sorry about that, guys. Too many animals and insects for my taste. It almost seems like the Quran is a manual on zoology. It was written for a zookeeper. It's a manual on zoology. <laughs> Give me one sec. 27 verses 7 to 9. One second. Seven. When Moses said into his household, lo, it's by afar. Louder so off. we can hear you also. Sorry. When Moses said unto his household, Lo, I spy afar off a fire, I will bring you tidings thence, or bring to you a borrowed flame that ye may warm yourselves. Mm -hmm. But when God, sorry, but when he reached it, 
he was called saying, blessed is whosoever is in the fire and whosoever is round about it and glorified the Allah, the Lord of the worlds. So who is in the fire that you can't escape? Yeah. Well, they were, they referred, because I asked them, like, is this voice Allah? Is it divine? Why do you ask? Said, well, Why do you need to ask? Continue reading who the voice is. Why are you asking? Read it. Whose voice is it? Keep reading. Blessed is whosoever in the fire and who's around it, right? Now keep reading. Right. Tonight. Oh, Moses, lo, it is I, Allah, the mighty, the wise. So why do you need to ask him when it says that's Allah's voice? Oh, Moses, lo, it is Allah. Read verse well, 9. No, I guess it's, um, I'm trying to help them understand their own issues because no, why would they have a problem friend, with friend, friend. John 1.1 1, 1, if so. they have Allah's voice here entering creation and Allah saying it is I? Friend, you're not going to help them understand by asking questions and let them get away with murder. Say, the verse says it's Allah's voice. Oh, read 9 again. What does he say? Oh, Moses, lo, it is I, Allah, the mighty, the wise. Okay. End of story. Now, why do you contradict your Quran? The voice is the voice of Allah because the voice says, I am Allah, the mighty and wise. And we know that Allah is in the fire because it says, blessed is he who is in the fire and around it. The one around it is Moses. The one in it is Allah. End of story. Right. And then uh, the tafsir that they read said, that it's either an angel or it's the created voice of Allah. So Allah created a voice and that voice is in the fire. And where does the text right. say that? Why are you letting them get away with the tafsir? The tafsir yeah, is that, not inspired. It's not inspired. Well, They're not a prophet. They're not a messenger. Yes, of course. Of course. I understand. I completely agree with you. I understand that. But they said, and this is, uh, I don't know if you know Hamza from sure. Hamza's den. Yeah, Hamza, Hamza, Hamza says, the douchebag. He yeah. goes, I don't know. Then he straight up said, I don't know. Well, at least he's honest. And then the Muslim metaphysician, he says, the tafsir says it's either an angel or the created voice of Allah. Okay, so wait. The, the, Allah, tafsir, Allah. the tafsir is inspired by Allah. It's a revelation sent from Allah after Muhammad. And whoever wrote it is now a messenger and a prophet who receives wahi. Flush your tafsir and your Quran down the toilet. That's what I would have said. I don't care what the tafsir says. What does the text say? What does the Quran say? Exactly. That was exactly my point. And so and what did they so say? So the to reason you? I'm calling is because I just wanted to verify, like I was verifying the name Yahweh in the Quran before yes. in a different uh, stream. I'm just, I just wanted to verify what yes. you thought of uh, this point that I'm making. No, I already, I've already discussed this in previous sessions and articles, but I don't, I don't use 28, 29 to 30. I use 27, 7 to 9. Not that I don't use 28. And in 9, it says, surely I am a lazy low. I don't know what, what is low? Low means surely. Yep, yeah, so surely what? He sure. said, oh, surely, surely I am Allah. Surely he is, is Laverne's Allah. friend. Oh, Laverne sure. and Shirley? The, the lady? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about, but in, in, in the Arabic Quran, surely I am Allah. I mean, That's most certainly. Certain. It's not like he may be, yes, maybe no. We know for sure, surely. Law is, I don't know what law is. Law means like, uh, like almost like, uh, ha. Like, ha. Uh, like, hey, <laughs> listen. No, no. no. Pay attention. It's in and Allah Aziz. Surely, low, yeah, okay, but anyway. Surely, just for a record, Shirley is Laverne's friend. I know Sister Shirley. Yeah. She come to our church. No, but no, Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's her friend. But anyway, my friend, 28, I quote, but I don't use that as my primary. Why? Because 27, verse 8. What did it say in 27, verse 8? I'm sorry, my friend. We're talking to I'm me. talking to him now. Why are you guys playing? Okay, I'm, I'm, you guys, I'm looking at the screen talking to him. Then he's he sitting oh, next to me, and I saw you asking and, uh, me. And what is reading Arabic going to do for <laughs> people like here? Too, yeah, okay, yeah. Love okay. you, brother. Yeah, sure. Join yeah, together. You yeah, with your mistakes. It's not going to work with me. Now read verse 8. What does it say? But when he reached it, he was called saying, Blessed is whosoever is in the fire and whosoever is round about it. All and right. glorified be Allah the Lord. So Allah is in the fire and sure. Moses is around the fire. Both are blessed. Both are blessed. Yeah, there you go. And Allah all often praises and blesses himself. So, if, no, honestly, I'm not lying. If they tell you, no, 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 no. See, Allah's blessing whoever's in the fire. He doesn't bless himself. No, you're a liar. Allah always and often praises himself, glorifies himself, blesses himself. 
And I'm going to give you an example of that. So who's in the fire? It's Allah. Because the only one speaking from the fire, which is why Moses went to the fire, is Allah. You can't get around but, that. They're liars. But it says that it's beside the fire. The voice is coming from beside the tree. Right? Well, my friend, when Muhammad repeats the well, story, no, 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 I got to hang up on, on this guy. Yeah, yeah. No, I got to hang up on this guy. Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm going to hang up on you because did I say tree or fire? Uh, fire. And can you show fire. me in 28, 29, 30, it says that the voice came beside the fire. It said the tree. So I'm not trying to argue. No, I'm no, but can you show me that? It's not there. Uh, sorry, I was just going off memory. Can you well, show me that? Saying, no, 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 wait, wait. There's an answer. Can, ortho. From beside the tree. Okay, Ortho, I got to block you, dude. This is too much. Bye-bye, man. You got to go. He's got to go. You got to go, buddy. You got to leave my channel, too. I got to block you. Sorry, buddy. You don't listen well. You talk too much. And you cause too much wrong. You did it last time. You got to remove you from mod status as well. You got to go. What's up? What's up? You want me to add up, Sam? Okay, this year, buddy. Yeah, go ahead. Mute me on your end. Okay, is it better? Yeah, go ahead. Wait, how do you make this louder? It's okay. It's loud enough, dude. Get to the point, Junior. I'm already upset. I'm going to punish Osama for your sin. Okay. So, well, I just wanted you to explain one verse, and it's John 20, 23. You Why? may have, but I just don't remember how you explain Why? it. Why do you want me to do that? Because it's not, it seems a bit weird because it says, if you forgive the sins I'm of sorry. any, they are forgiven. You called the statement of Jesus weird, and you don't want to get blocked for that. Hmm. Wait, no. no. It seems a bit weird. Jesus' words seems a bit weird. Hmm. Block him! No. Block him now! <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Open up John 20. Open up the Gospel of John chapter 20. Yeah, it's already open. Oh, they, sorry. I didn't know. I can't see through the screen. I apologize, sir. Do you forgive me for existing? Yeah. Uh, read 20, John 20, read 21 and 22. 21. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you as the father has sent me also, as the father sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, now read 21 and 22 one more time. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. So you see the context of that particular verse is about the, the mission, right? Sending them out to do what? What is he sending them out to do? Uh, preach. Evangelize? You're like scared, dude. Speak with confidence. What is he going to send out to do? To go to a buffet? No, evangelize. Okay. So as I, the Father sent me, I send you. Meaning, what did the Father send Jesus to do? To preach the gospel of salvation. The good news that Jesus Christ has come to save the world and you need to turn to him to be, to be saved, right? Yeah. Okay. So now what he's saying is, now I will send you to do the same thing. And just like Jesus worked in union with the Holy Spirit, in perfect, inseparable union with the Holy Spirit to accomplish the Father's will on earth because Jesus and the Spirit never work apart from one another. He's now saying that same Spirit that was working with me and in me and through me will now be working in you and through you and empowering you to continue this ministry of preaching the gospel, right? That's why he then breathed yeah. on them, received the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. He now makes them spiritually alive and he will empower them by the spirit to now preach the same gospel and do miracles that Jesus did to continue the ministry of bringing people to saving faith. It's in that context, he says, 23. Now read 23. If you forgive the sins of any other, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So in the context, the forgiveness of sin or the condemnation of sin is directly tied in with their ministry being sent out. Being sent out to preach the gospel, right? Yeah. Now, how do they forgive someone's sins? How do they <clears throat> condemn someone for their sins? By proclaiming, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has come to save you. Believe in him, you're forgiven. You don't believe in him, you, you're condemned, you remain in your sin, and you go to hell. 
Now, how do I know that's the meaning in the context of this chapter? Just now read John 20, 30 to 31. Watch John, who was one of them. Notice how he forgives and how he condemns. John 20, 30 to 31. Okay. And truly, Jesus did many other... Wait, what? John 20, 30 to 31? Dude, I'm about to block you. Why are you shocked? Read it again before I bust Osama's head. <laughs> and truly, he, and Jesus you even have a funny did... picture of me, too. Is his picture on you? Look, look what... Hey, look, he uses my picture for his... For his look, look. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> That's you cool. would like it, wouldn't yeah, you? Look like that. Yeah. Here, let me show everybody. And he's telling me, I'm not going to watch, watch, watch you. Look, I'm going to show people what you're doing to me. So, <laughs> oh, you're laughing, huh? You okay, watch here. It is, it's cool, man. <laughs> okay, watch, watch. Guys, watch what his picture is. His picture on his Skype is my, me looking weird. Look, look. That's me. That's what he's got. <laughs> That's see, but I like them. You can even see my nostrils, Junior. <laughs> All right, now read John 20, 30 to 31. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in him. You see what John did? He just proclaimed, You're forgiven if you believe in Jesus Christ and you receive eternal life. How did he forgive him? Yeah. How did he forgive them? By telling them, believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and you will receive eternal life. Now go to John 3, 36. John 3, 36. Okay. I like that, okay. I like how you say, okay, like you're offended and have an attitude. Okay. No, that's, that's not what I mean. That's okay. John 3, 36. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son, believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. There you go. John said, you're forgiven. John said, you're condemned to hell. How? I'm preaching the gospel, and I'm letting you know, when you believe, you're forgiven, you are saved, you are washed, you have everlasting life. You reject, you're condemned, you remain in your sin, you go to hell. You caught it? Yeah. Now go to First John, the epistle of John. First John chapter five. Okay, first John chapter five. When you get there, let me know. Wait, what verse? Okay, if you're in the epistle of John, not the gospel, go to chapter five. I want you to read now from verses nine to thirteen. Okay. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his, of his son. He who believes in the son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar. So notice, if you, has, slowly, if you believe the witness of God concerning his son, Jesus Christ, then you have God's witness in yourself. That means you're bearing witness to it. You're in agreement with God. If you disagree with God and what he said about Jesus, you make God out to be a liar. Keep reading. Because he has not believed the testimony that God gave, that that God has given of his son. Mm -hmm. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Do you caught it? You see how it's he's pronouncing forgiveness and condemnation? You believe in Jesus Christ as God's son. You will live. You have life. You're forgiven. You don't believe in the Son of God. You don't have him. You have no life. You will die and perish. Keep reading it all the way to 13 because I got a few more. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. So you caught it, right? Yep. Now go to 1 John, same letter, same epistle, chapter 1, read verses 7 to 10. This is what it means in the context. All right. But if we walk, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, 
He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Mm -hmm. Did you catch it? If you believe in Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ will wash you of your sin. If you confess your sin, he is faithful to forgive you. If you say you have no sin, then you remain in your sin. You stand condemned because you make him out to be a liar. You see how John is forgiving and condemning? How is he doing it? Yeah. How is yeah. John forgiving and condemning people? Well, like he's preaching mm -hmm. and he's saying that if you walk in the light, then we have the light and the blood of Jesus will cleanse us and wash us from all sin. So that's that's how it is, right? So you get it then. In other words, they're, they're saying you believe in Jesus, you are forgiven. So you believe in Christ, you're forgiven. Have no doubt. You don't believe in Jesus, you remain condemned. God's wrath is on you. That's how they're forgiving and condemning in that context. Because in the context, it's about Jesus sending them out in the life and the power of the Holy Spirit to preach the gospel. And they have the authority to say, now that you believe in Jesus, you're forgiven. You have everlasting life if you remain in union with him and yield to the Spirit. You reject Jesus, now you perish. You are now condemned and God's wrath remains on you. Sadly, Sam, if you don't mind. Uh, of course. Uh, in, uh, in some churches in where I come from in Egypt, they believe actually that the ministers have the power in their own to say, Anta Muharram, you are not forgiven or you are forgiven. As if they play the role of uh, uh, So you're going to start controversy right now. No, I'm not going to start controversy. Because let me, so can, I, can I cut it? Hold on. Sure. No. Brother, I know what you're referring to. I have to now stop you because you have Catholics here, Orthodox, Coptic. What you're saying is in a direct shot on what's called oracular confession. Mm -hmm. Oracular confession isn't they have power in themselves to forgive. I will give you 10 million bucks. You quote any Catholic priest or Orthodox that says, do you in your own authority have power to forgive? Or are you proclaiming by the authority that Christ has given you that now you've confessed God has forgiven you? Now, you, your $10 million, you can keep it for yourself. But I know for sure all the believers who joined our church years ago, they were thrown into the fire of hell because they yeah. left that church and became a part of us. And how's it? And did you know, that? a lot of Protestants it's become some, Catholic. Yeah, I know. So we're going to start a debate that. here over an issue. I'm not, that, I'm not about yeah. to who no, because, okay, become here. what. Catholics, what. Catholics, because he goes with people who have left the Catholic church who don't know much about Catholic tradition, just like many Protestants don't know about the Bible. The Catholics here. Do you agree with this man that your church says that the priest in of himself can forgive sins? Let's hear. Maybe, maybe they'll say no. Maybe they'll no, say no. Because it's in the catechism. Allah but it's in the catechism. Hold on, the my job, my job. Wait, my job. Patience. Yeah. When I talk about biblical issues, maybe it's best that you stick with the chronic issues. I have to be okay. honest with you. But okay. Sam, I'm talking about real life, real people. There are who people have been in thrown out of the church yes. because they did not repent and come back. No, because they the didn't church. follow what was mandated to them by their church, which is based on James 5, 13 to 19, and mm -hmm. also the Didache. Brother, I've done issues on this. I Let's not start. And I heard already okay, many times. I know this. what you're talking about. Brethren. See? No, 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 no. Oh, they say no. It's okay. But okay. I will bring you. I love you. I'll bring you. Yeah, bring me. The, who no, did I that. don't care the person. Bring me the document because I'll bring you Protestants who don't have a clue about the Trinity. They think Jesus is the Father. Don't play that game. Give me their official documents. Here you go. So no, now you start debate no. with Osama, misrepresenting Catholic Church. Catholics, it's do not, not invite him to your church. By the way, it's not Catholic. Do not invite Cop <laughs> Coptics. Don't invite him to your church. It's, Coptics. It's Coptics. So, yeah. yeah because Coptics. Abuna Zakaria. Has no clue about the Bible. Who is a who was a Coptic priest? He's gonna say, "Yeah, in my own authority, I forgave people." It's stuck for Allah, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar takbir. I love this guy, but not that much. When you talk about hundreds of ministers who does this no. throughout the hundreds of years. Okay, we're, even, I'm gonna call Abuna Zakaria, even, the guy that okay, he likes. I have his okay, number call here. Call him. Call him. Okay. Uh, Co Coptic priest Abuna Zakaria, who used to tell people, "You're forgiven." But according to him, Abu Nazakir thinks that he has the authority in of himself. No, because the church's official teaching is the priest stands in the place of Christ. When a person does what the Holy Spirit demands, he can then say, I have forgiven you. Not that I am doing it, but as Christ's representative in, in, in the place of Christ. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. But Sam, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the written document in the in the Orthodox Church belief. Can we I'm go to the next question, brother? The Please. action Please. of the ministers. Brother, the this, minister is following the tradition that says they can do it so we're debating sure yes okay sure 
Can we go to the next question? See, this is why I got to be careful what questions to answer when he's around because we're going to start a debate among cops. <laughs> I'm not debating, Sam. No, I'm because, not arguing brother, with you. One thing I just said. Yeah. I just said it, and I'm going to hold you accountable to it yeah. in front of everyone. I said, because we are servants of the truth, mm -hmm. we are servants of the truth, and we love the Lord, we must do everything we can to accurately represent even a view we don't agree with. I have studied what they believe. There is no minister who knows his tradition. None. None. That say, I by myself, in my own person, on my own authority, can forgive sins. They don't believe that. Well, maybe, no minister. Maybe we we'll need to make a trip to Egypt and I will okay, meet you, you can with be, hundreds dude, of Dude, I'll go right now to the Coptic church here around the area. Hundreds, not just one. Hundreds. Okay, brother, you have another That's question? It. You guys have, you have another question, Junior? See what you started, Junior? I'm going to have to block you now. No, no, don't block. <laughs> okay. Do you have another wait. question? Okay. That's all right, sir. No, that was my only question. So then answer thoroughly? Yeah. Okay. If you don't have another question, that was the answer in the context. In the context, right, yeah. you got it, right? Yeah. All right. So if that you got the answer, if I don't see you change that image and you have a picture of Osama instead of me on your Skype, <laughs> I'm blocking you and I want to send the Muslims your address. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, brother. <laughs> oh, you're laughing at me. Keep huh? it, man. Keep it. I all love right. that picture. Leave Brethren. Don't forget, in an hour and a half, I'm going live again. So, Junior, make sure you come back an hour and a half with a different picture. If you don't have a big new picture, I'm going to have to block Usama, throw him out of his own house and car and take over, and then I'm going to hunt you down. Okay? Amen. You want me there, bro? Okay, got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You keep laughing, bro. <laughs> there you go again, man. Are you laughing at me or with me, homie? With you. I got to be laughing for you to laugh with me. See, now you sinned. You lied. Now you got to confess. <laughs> oh, you laughed What's again, the... bro. All right, anyway. Guys, Lord willing, here it is. I scheduled it. Where is, where is it? It doesn't show. Hold on. I scheduled. Hold on one second, brother. I got to get that. I'm going to be refuting Greg Stafford. Yeah, Greg Stafford. You think that picture was weird? Check this one out. Lord willing, in an hour and a half, I'm going live. So please, brethren, join me. We're going to refute Greg Stafford on the Trinity deity of Christ. I'll be joined with Protestant believer, another guy who protests. Coptics, Catholic, Assyrian Church, make sure you don't invite Protestant believer or Osama. X them out. Just kidding. Not. All right. There goes the link. So, Junior, I'll see you in an hour and a half, right? I am. But make sure you've changed your picture. Yes. Make sure I see an ugly, hideous picture of Osama's face. Uh uh. Leave mine alone. Or I'm going to block you. All right, brother. All God right. bless you. Let me know if you have more questions so I don't take your call again. Okay. All right. Okay. Lord bless you. Take care. The guy doesn't know if I'm serious Ooh. or a joke. Because my okay. Guys, sorry. Sometimes Christians debate live. That's what I love about live stream. Even Christians debate. School him, son. School him. Let's bring Robertson Janice. Let's school this guy. Trent Horn, where are you, baby? Abuna Zachary. Come on. We got a Protestant heretic. We need to school him. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Lord Jesus willing, an hour and a half, right? Let's let's make these sessions go viral for the glory of Christ. All right. God bless you. Christ is risen, risen indeed. See you in an hour and a half. I gave you the link. We're going to bring our bonus. I'm going to school you, sucker. All right. God bless you guys. Love you guys. Take care. Amen. All right. Hold on. All right.